The following is a presentation of The Day. It's Friday night on the campus of Norwich Free Academy and the home Wildcats are going to play host to the Vikings from East Lyme in what should be a competitive battle of two of the biggest schools in the ECC. And all the action will be live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that's good begins with a smile, and at Waterford Dental Health, your smile is their top priority. The personalized gentle care that you deserve comes at Waterford Dental Health. So go to waterforddentalhealth.com and find out all about the quality care you can receive. Waterford Dental Health. Casey O'Neill along with the coach, Pasta Santabria. Good evening, brother. We are so far dry. Yes, sir. And the two teams out in front of us, uh, you know, 1-0-5, oh, don't let it fool you. The That's other, right. The other 3-2. and two and uh, Don't let that fool you either, fool right? Either. <laughs> you know, you know, it, either of them could, could exchange records. And tonight, uh, this is the first chance NFA has in conference, they think, to get on the win column. The kick is high and taken by East Lime. Gregory Page brings it up to the 25-yard line. And that's where East Lime will have its first possession of the ball game. East Lime led by quarterback Ronan McNamara. He likes Aiden Patterson and Greg Page in the backfield. Nick Petrini, Alex Dreyfus, the main targets. And they won an exciting last second win over New London on a pass from McNamara to Petrini in the corner of the end zone, 28-27. Mm -hmm. Wildcat defense built on speed. First down from the shotgun, McNamara. Gives to Patterson, and Patterson is swallowed up pretty quickly. Tegan Caloro, first one there for NFA. NFA's got good size up front, coach. They've got yep. athletes in the linebacking core. Gage Hinkley, he's uh, going to be someone to focus on tonight on both sides of the ball. How many times does your quarterback slash running back also like to play D end, safety, and hit. He's, he's in one of them. Talk about reliability. McNamara on second down. Gonna throw low over the middle looking for Dreyfus. He was defended on the play. More by the turf than anything else. The yeah, throw was just a little low. Definitely it's gonna be great to see these two uh, lines going after each other right now. We got a defense that has movement, an offensive line that likes to grind down the field. So this balance will go for four quarters. We'll see who's gonna be the first one to give in. Xavier Sebastian did a nice job jumping the route. I mean, he tried to get there and, and maybe that influenced the throw. Yep. Third and long now for the Vikings on there for possession. Empty backfield, five in the pattern as McNamara rolls, pressured, pressured, throws down the sideline, looking for Dreyfus, and it's incomplete right at midfield. Pressure came from Lucas Cabral, and a great job defensively by Jameer Quinn Haskins, only a freshman. He was right on Dreyfus's hip. Awesome, a risky call playing cover zero and going after that guy. So it was man-to-man -man coverage. Again, they, they broke contain, but that was a lot of pressure for those first three plays from the Wildcats. Max Van Dusen in the punt for East Lime. He'll stand inside his own, well, inside his own 15 right at the 13 yard line. So NFA holds and should get good field position. No pressure, punt is a low line drive that bounces and takes a great bounce for East Lime where it is picked up by Connor Gaugan and he is down in NFA territory on the 35-yard line, and that's where NFA will have its first possession of the ball game. We mentioned Gage Hinkley. He'll be the primary person to watch for. He had three long touchdowns, well, three, two very long touchdowns, three touchdowns overall last week, and they're very close loss to Fitch. NFA thought they were gonna be in the win column last week and couldn't hold on against the Falcons. Hinkley will operate at quarterback to start from the shotgun. Little double reverse, and East Lime sniffs it, and that's going to be a huge loss. Noah Edwards was there for East Lime, 
That play really never had a chance. Yeah, Noah stayed in his gap, and he read that first pitch. Then he watched the guy coming back around, so he settled his feet. Made a great play. He wrapped and grabbed cloth. One of the important things about tackling is if you don't have proper tackling, but you can grab cloth, you know your teammates will be there. Second down and 18. Hinkley will operate from the shotgun. Handoff goes to Xavier Sebastian, the freshman, and gains couple of yards it's going to bring up third and long and you know this is the kind of thing NFA wants to be careful about right those obvious passing situations East Slime will they pin their ears back and go after Hinkley or are they going to sit soft it's always fun to find out the chess match between the two coaches yeah this hybrid defense looks really good for East Slime Hinkley to throw plenty of time over the middle out to the flat now it goes intended for Ryan Cleary incomplete off his fingertips Great job by the front of NFA. Boy, they gave Hinkley plenty of time. Definitely. It was a four-man rush, but they also contained with their guys, allowing the quarterback to make those reads that are necessary. But this umbrella defense that East Lime is playing right now, it's really good because if you have a spread formation, you're really giving up that run kind of stack, but the outside, you're covering those receivers. Hinkley will also punt for NFA, which does add the effort, you know, the essence of a trickery, but instead he bangs a high punt. Taken by Matt Leone, breaks a tackle, heads down the left sideline, now cuts it and spins out of bounds at the NFA 40. So good return from Leone, and East Lyme will have it in great field position on the NFA side of things. Yeah, this is the chess game that we're looking for in football. You get field position, you start working. A lot of pressure from both defenses, but it seems like East Lyme won this challenge by getting that ball on their uh, side of the field. Hinkley last week, they went to direct snap running plays with him at quarterback. Mm -hmm. And I'll be interested to see. I think you saw East Lime play in that bubble, the mm -hmm. umbrella like you mentioned. They're, they're just trying to keep everything in front of them. Exactly. McNamara from the shotgun at, his own, at the NFA 45. He's going to keep it himself and get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Not much there. Good movement by that defensive line, boy. They're really slanting, working some techniques to get into gaps that they're assigned to and then making plays while they're finishing off in their gap techniques. Second down and nine and a half. We'll give them a half yard. Patterson will stand to right behind McNamara. Fake, rolls. Pressured and it's incomplete. He was looking for Dreyfus. Pressure came from Josiah Success. But <laughs> Talk about that name right there. <laughs> he successfully made that quarterback throw an incomplete. Give him credit. <laughs> the third down play upcoming. Okay. East Lime taking its time. McNamara to throw, deep down the sideline, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it's well defended, incomplete. Mark Gendron, excuse me, check that. Wyatt Woodcock for NFA on the defense of Nick Petrini. So that's his favorite target. Big Petrini yep. goes up for it, but credit NFA, Woodcock was right there. He went up with him, two guys with size, and went incomplete. Yep, he knew when he was running the outside route, it automatically made it man-to-man. -man. He had his hand on his hip, played off of the ball, and batted it down. That was a great job by that cornerback there. Van Dusen will punt Van from his own 48-yard line, so right at midfield, Rock, essentially. Connor Goggin. Connor Goggin will stand at his own five, so here's a chance for East Lime to pin NFA deep. NFA hoping to get this in breathing position maybe get a good return. Coming after the punt, does a great job getting it off and gets a fabulous result, but it does just die into the end zone for a touchback. Give Van Dusen credit, they were coming after yeah. it. He got it off and maybe a little bit unlucky, wise decision by Goggin, yep. and they'll have it at the 20. So far, these two defenses are making themselves a premiere for tonight's game. We'll see what happens right now when East Lyme tries to defend. Well, we, I always like, you know, what will when will NFA go to the direct snaps 
They had Hinkley throw the ball the first few times, but he's their best running back. So let's find out if they're going to start the running game with Hinkley as well. Handoff on first down to Xavier Sebastian. Nothing there. Sebastian on the carry. Noah Edwards in on the tackle first for East Lyme. He's going to bring up second and 11. Looks like a whole new package of personnel coming in for NFA. What a couple of bigger guys in there. <laughs> so second and long. Hinkley out of the shotgun. There's the keeper himself, direct snap. And Hinkley's going to get about five yards on the direct snap, the running right over right tackle. I think this is what Wildcat's good at right now. You know, get those big guys that you can piece together and work a running game that would establish clock and also the opportunity for breakaway plays. Because this is a very fast team. Wildcats running the Wildcat. Amen, right? <laughs> is there a Viking offense for East Lime to run later on? I don't know. Maybe the – we'll think about that one. There's a couple of good ones. Hinkley drops back. Has a man, middle of the field – Incomplete. He was looking for Ryan Cleary. And that goes off the fingertips. Weld's covered, and it'll be third, excuse me, fourth and eight. And Hinkley will just stay in and punt. Yep, number two, Thomas Matlock, man. That guy has got a little bit of an intensity. He saw the pass play go in there. He dropped what was called an under coverage. He got under that receiver, and still, even the ball went through him, he made a play there to stop it. Well, Thomas Matlock is the all state, state open. Shot put champion as a huge high punt by Hinkley comes down. Page fair catch. catches it at their own hands, 45 right? yard line. <laughs> now, I don't want to get into it because yeah. Matlock and his shot put uh, prowess might have some a little thing to do with one of our pounds of pasta. Oh, at oh, wow. halftime today. So I don't want to get too into it. Because now we're going to talk. I used to throw the shot at New London and I felt pretty good about that, but I wasn't that great. And as what Peter Wappy knows. <laughs> I could have been an outstanding shot putter. We yep. had a game day challenge. He saw me sh throw the shot put. You got the glide technique. You I was glide. very, very talented. <laughs> I was a very talented shot putter. First down. McNamara going to throw. Zips it. Incomplete. Almost, Almost intercepted. Caloro was there and had it in his hands. I think, if anything, was almost thrown too hard. Yeah, definitely. He's got to get a little bit more patient there. He sees a lot of pressure, but the offensive line is doing a pretty good job picking it up. Yes, it's second down and 10. So the one thing we have seen so far is no offense. No. Uh, I mean, we've had almost no positive plays. We haven't had a completed pass. We haven't had a, a lot of yard, you know, I'm positive you this, yardage. The synergy tonight is a defensive battle. I see that these guys are really wanting to take over their positions today. Second down and 10. McNamara calls the play. Wristbands are open. See if NFA sends pressure. They do inside blitz. Draw. Patterson, nothing there. So McNamara changed the play up. Patterson on the draw. They were anticipating that run. They were the yep. pressure that NFA sent, but. There's something that NFA has seen on film that gives them a perfect key read to that play. And we know sometimes, you know, watching film, we pick up things. It could be a lineman that's having a light hand looking like he's pulling, or even a situation where the back has a certain stance that if you pick up these reads, it will help you on defense. Third down. McNamara has time. Deep ball, and it's incomplete over the hand fingertips. Intended was intended for Leon went over his fingertips on the hash incomplete. Definitely these Wildcats are peppering up little stunts from the inside, a little outside blitz pressure, and then drop, jumping into some zone coverage to outnumber the receivers there. And Dusan will punt it away, and Gaugan will be back to receive. I was at, you know, uh, NFA's practice as well as East Lime's practice this week and had a chance to talk to, you know, players on both sides. And uh, NFA was very confident that in terms that they that they understood East Lime's scheme. Yep. Whether or not you can you know combat it, but right. they felt very confident like that they knew how to defend East Lime. Exactly. There's ticks that you'll find out from that. Van Dusen bounces. Galgan takes it at his 15-yard line, and 
breaks a couple of tackles before finally wrestled down as he crosses the 30, and NFA will have its next possession. You know, East Lyme has, has had a lot of success offensively. If you look at their, at their scores, you know, 21, 37, 28, 28, 28. I mean, they're a four touchdown a game team. Right. NFA has been giving up a lot of points. You thought maybe this might be an offensive game tonight. Yeah. Well, the numbers yet. show here. The fans that are here, it's a little bit intimidating tonight with this Wildcat family. Direct snap, Hankley keeps it. He'll gain three. You know, I've always felt when you come into NFA territory that there's this aura that the families here in the community brings to the table. And then you got the biggest bands probably around in the area with, the, you can see, the biggest cheerleading squad. So all that atmosphere can definitely be an intimidating factor. But they're holding strong, and we'll see what happens here. Caloro actually on the direct snap that time. Hinkley from the shotgun on second and long. Handoff and a first flag of the day as Magnus King. Quinn Haskins on the carry. Check that, Haskins on, on the, the carry. Illegal block against the Wildcats. An illegal block against NFA. That puts him back a bit. I'll tell you, from both offenses, they don't need things like this. Penalties can hurt them, and it puts field position into the favor of the defense if you think about it. So that's going to back them up, second and long. Not ideal for what NFA has been looking to do. Mm -hmm. takes the ball all the way back to the Wildcat. So they're going to back him up with 531 here remaining. Now the officials are going to go back to the spot, talk it over and do it again here. Or? I believe he had the wrong spot. Because that is a spot foul. And here we go. He's lining up and he's doing the strut. I think we got it right now. All right. Little BG strut right there by the referee. At uh, the 25. Uh, 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 you got a little bit more? Alive. Staying alive. I feel like the uh, the guy from, uh, was it The Price is Right, when he goes up there, yo, de, yo, de, yo. you don't know when he's going to stop. Oh, my gosh, the yodeler. Yeah, the I yodeler, love that. he looks good. I mean, they're in shape Same out there. The <laughs> I love the yodeler. <laughs> I used to always mess up with that one. <laughs> so second and very long for East Live. Aaron Driscoll in at quarterback. Driscoll throws it over the middle, just incomplete. Driscoll's Looking fast. for a Goggin. I'll tell you, I like this East Lime Viking defense of seven on seven kind of competition here. They are playing zone and they're jumping under. They know that they got the situation here as a high passing situation. So it's very difficult for now and NFA to try to complete anything when you have that kind of zone that's overloading certain areas that these receivers are at. So now they've moved Hinkley out to wide receiver and sophomore Aaron Driscoll is in at quarterback. New look here for NFA on third and 20. Driscoll to throw. Has time, deep ball, and it's incomplete. Just over the hands of Hinkley as he crossed midfield. But Driscoll throws a nice ball. That was a very nice ball, yeah. Good posture, felt comfortable in the pocket. Just a little bit off. So that'll bring up fourth down. And the other thing is, since both teams throw it so much, mm -hmm. we've seen games where the quarter ends and both teams have had one possession. Each team has had like four possessions and we're still only halfway through the first period because they're throwing it so much. Well, credit to the both defenses that are really stopping these plays and making them force these third and longs that brings up the passing play. Hinkley with a high punt that's going to come down right on midfield and it's downed by NFA. And I will say the one big difference has been East Lyme has had great field position at around midfield. And they haven't been, East, and NFA has not been able to no. switch field position yet. It's a great chess game, and I call this a coaching chess game situation right now where both coaches on both teams are trying to find out how to get that ball into the end zone. It's favoring right now East Lyme. So first and 10 Vikings, ball at the 47-yard line of East Lyme. We have a timeout or an equipment problem that somebody or someone just needs attending to, but we've got a, some staff running across the field. All right, 
We're ready to go. McNamara with Patterson to his left. NFA shows pressure. Quarterback keeper, nothing there. Great job, Mason Holt. Big number 70 of NFA shot the gap and took McNamara down for a loss of five. Yeah, they're sending a lot of pressure with uh, number five, Talon Amato. He's coming off the edge. It's the first, again, this is another first down blitzing kind of scheme that's going on right here, which is bringing pressure from the weak side with those big boys coming from the right. Something that Eastline has to work on trying to understand what, how, how to block it. Second down and long. Ronan McNamara is going to throw. Has time. No one open. Now he rolls. Looking for someone, and he'll get rid of the football out of bounds. No one open, and running. the pressure eventually came. Up third down. Those receivers from East Lime were well covered by the Wildcats. Seems like both offenses are just not clicking in gear to play the plays that they're good at and getting sequences of first downs. That's the biggest thing right now. How, which team is going to have two to three consecutive first downs to make this happen? Third and long. McNamara has time. Deep ball, looking for Leon, and we're going to get a penalty flag on Nehemiah York. Nemo, as they call him. That was a good mismatch in size right there. Yeah, he's tapping his chest going, that was me. That was me. The problem is when you're on single coverage out on an island, there's really no one else to blame. It's, it's really tough. It's very lonely out there. Again, technique is so important for cornerbacks. In a situation like that, That's where you know your ball's behind you and you can't see, you have to work on getting to the hip of that receiver so that when you see his hands go up, you can make a play. He hesitated and he just went for the tackle without knowing where the ball's at. Obviously, this gives now East Lime that potential that we were looking for. Got a first down, let's see if they can get another one. 15 yard penalty results in a first down for the Vikings. So first down Vikings, their first first down. And remember, that's the high school pass interference rule where that was a potentially 30 yard interception, but a 15 yard penalty. Right. Yeah, always, always the smart move in high school to mug the receiver. Penalty flag on the play. I guess East Lime's paying the favor now with their penalty. We'll get a false start. False start against the offense is a five-yard penalty. That'll back them up five yards. Yeah, that's the one thing about high school. There's very few penalties in high school that are automatic first downs. Mm -hmm. So if it's, you know, when in doubt, commit the penalty. If you don't want to give up the big play. That's true. I mean, sometimes that is going to be the safe way, especially in high school football rules. Dreyfus in motion. Delayed handoff. Nothing doing for Aiden Patterson. No running, no running room at all. Coloro This Wildcat defense has a great entity in what they're doing right now, and their scheme seems to be really successful against East Lime. Seems to be a little bit faster and a lot more energy on that side of the field. I feel like the passing game for East Lime is, I mean, it's really right now it's about Second giving McNamara some time, but. Right. Uh, when he's had time, coverage has been excellent. That's the mixture of the hybrid uh, coverages. Pressure comes, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Leone, had to throw yep. off his back foot. The blitz was coming from NFA, and that's going to bring up a right at midfield. I don't know if East Lime's going to they're going to continue to keep this field position, but it's third and long. Mm -hmm. That time, the pressure dialed up off the corner. Third down, draw, Patterson. NFA not fooled. Mm, no way. <laughs> and he gets to the 45-yard line of NFA, but I think we're going to see Van Dusen in trying to continue to pin NFA deep in their own territory. Great series by NFA right there, mixing up again those blitz packages and that hybrid coverage right there. Some sides, what they do is they'll lock on man on one side, bring that pressure from that side, knowing that that quarterback might not be looking at that side, taking advantage of the coverage side. Van Dusen stands at his 40-yard line.
go. Big bang punt down the left side. Takes a bounce inside the five yard line. And what a great punt from Van Dusen. And Boy, if possible, NFA is backed up the farthest they have been all night. So with 2.30 remaining here in the first period, NFA has got its worst field position. Yeah, I mean, he should have gotten that ball, at least secured it at the spot right there. But he let it go thinking it was going to roll into the end zone. You can't. Turf, I would say turf ball is a lot different than grass ball. And if you see that turf, that bounce could have went right in there, but it just started to roll to the left, and, uh, and it stayed right there on the ground. And great opportunity for East Lime right now. So NFA inside their own five. Back to Hinkley at quarterback. Direct snap to Hinkley, a little screen to Gaugan. Gaugan slips a tackle and rolls out to the 10 yard line. That's the biggest gain yet on first down for NFA. Gain of six. So second down and four gives the NFA not only a little breathing room, but some options here of options what they can little, do. Yes, exactly. We haven't seen a second and short in a minute. <laughs> Neither team. I don't think there's been a second and short. No. Nothing but going backwards up till now. Hand off. Nice gain. Good hole. But then a great tackle. Magnus King on a carry. Magnus King had the carry the for the Wildcats. Wild Got out to the 17, though, first down. But it looked like he, if he had just kept going north south. Yeah. Sometimes you know the, the skit scat skills doesn't work. You know, you got to go straight. Once you see an opening, go north or go south. I blame, te I, I blame Tech Mobile. Yeah, Tech Mobile. Yeah, you're right about that. I scored 55 points one in Tech Mobile. Just went to the outside. All you did is go as far outside as you could and then That's straight up it. the sideline. Bo Jackson. Direct snap to Hinkley. And he is ripped down in the backfield. A loss of two on the play, three on the play. Noah Edwards on a run blitz was the first one there, and Hinkley loses three. Yeah, he was year great. 16-year-olds these days play a lot of tech mobile. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's the thing. You know, it's the TikTok uh, Retro. topic now. Everybody plays tech mobile. Retro, well, come on now. Yeah. You know what's old is hey, new. The is college new dorms, old. man, for a quarter. Have a little enter into a tournament. Classic tech mobile, sure. Classic. I don't know about it. I don't think they play Coleco Vision, but no. I think Tech Mobile. Coleco, also. while we're going classic there. Donkey Kong. NFA. Hinkley. Pressured again. Rolled, and he is going to be sacked. Sacked back inside. Jacob Agaro got him there inside the five. So they're back to where they started, and it's third and long. That front four did a great job doing the most important thing on any pass rush, staying in your lane. When that quarterback comes to you, squeeze and settle. Bring him back inside that pocket. And that's what made that play right there. Real tough situation for the Wildcats here. Third and long. Hinkley to throw from his own end zone. Deep over the middle, intercepted. Greg Page with the interception as the first quarter buzzer sounds. East Lime with great field position. We're at the end of one, no score. You're watching game day live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza, in Waterford. Game Day is a production of The Day Publishing Company. If you'd like to support Game Day and help us continue to bring you the best in Connecticut high school sports, please consider purchasing a print or digital subscription to The Day at theday.com slash subscribe. Second quarter action about to start. No score in the ballgame. East Lyme and NFA in the defensive battle at the end of the first quarter. 
Greg Page with the interception for the Vikings has them operating at the NFA 30 as we are to start the second period. East Lime goes to a different package. Malachi Harris in as a black as well. And Harris gets the trap and he is wrestled to the ground immediately. Cameron Bell Snow in on the tackle for the Wildcats. Uh, Cameron did a no great game. job there. Well, they were pulling and trying to get a trap in there. He followed that guard and squeezed down there. And the bounce, when he came back out, he was there to wrap up. Good job by that front defense there for the Wildcats. Second and 10 for the Vikings. Now, here is a, a spot where they're not going to punt. This no is where they're, they're in four, four down or even a field goal. That's right. McNamara going to throw. Deep ball in the end zone. Touchdown, Nick Petrini. Vikings on top, 6 nothing. What a great play. A fake jet sweep on that action right there caused that one-on-one -on -one matchup to be there right there. And good throw. Great throw off the shoulder. Petrini's got great size. Great trust with McNamara. That trust was shown last week when he hauled in a big third down touchdown to beat New London with 10 seconds remaining. You see it again there. McNamara trusts him, knows where to put it, knows he'll go up and get it. Yep. And Petrini gets the Vikings on the board. Yeah. That was great. Finn Bruno, freshman, in for the extra point for East Line. And that's going to be backed up, I think, five yards, delay a game. Yeah, nope, false start. So either way, it'll be backed up slightly longer. Five yard penalty. I learned a lesson last weekend. We're going to talk, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it. You know, we talk, we talk all the time about what having a great kicker yeah. can do in high school to change things. Having the ability to kick a 40 yard field goal, to have extra points be second nature second and things nature. like that. Well, I learned something last week, uh, and I'll bring it up here after this extra point attempt by Bruno. High snap, and we're going to get another false start, so I'll bring it up now. Bacon Academy has a great kicker, Jace King. He can, good from 45 yards, he's got the leg. Last week, at the end, uh, in the middle of the first half, they're down 3-0 to, to, win, to win them. Yep and he has a chance to tie it with a 40-yard field goal. But the timing of the whole thing is off a little bit. Come to find out, the holder got hurt the week before. Brand oh, new holder. That's, that could do The you. holder and the timing of the catch down was off just a bit, and on the longer field goals, he shoved it just a little bit right. You're right. So everything is hunky-dory. There's three components into the kicking game. Aha, uh -huh. and we'll get to that one after Bruno's attempt here, all the way back on his own 20. So this will be a 30-yard extra point. Snap is good, kick is up, plenty of leg, and it is good, 7-0. What a kick, huh? <laughs> I'll be back with the rest of the place-kicking story after these messages. 7-0 East Lime. You're watching Game Day Live on Day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off-season, and game day has no off-season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. 7 nothing Vikings about to kick off. So back and forth game. Wyndham scores late to go up 10-7, and Bacon's driving the field, and they get down to the 20-yard line. Oh, boy. 24-yard line yep. with time to kick the, extra, the last field goal of the game, except their long snapper got hurt on the previous series. Oh, that hurts right there. Backup long snapper, backup holder. Never really practiced between the two of them. It's like making a cake at the end of it. You said, oh, my God, I forgot to add the flour. So, you know, kickers are great. We can't lose sight 
that, it, like you said, it's a three-part process. Definitely. You need a good long snapper, you need a good holder, and you need a kicker, and that timing needs to be in sync. I remember in collegiate football when I was trained by <clears throat> the coaches at Delaware State University, it was not really about, you know, speed. It was about, let's get it at 1.9, because physics will teach you that the edge player playing at a certain distance couldn't do it. So that's when I started realizing well, how game, mathematics was a great component in the game. And so if we got it at 1.9 at a collegiate level, that kicker would have that ball off before anybody got near him. Same thing for punting as well. Yes, how, how quickly the rush can actually get yeah. there. <laughs> that's why the punter, they have taken that, they've switched the punting mechanics mm -hmm. to take one step away, right. that one, and now it's a two-step It's a two -step process, yep. and you very rarely see punters with the big, long, now mm -hmm. it's a much shorter process. Uh, squib kick from East Lime. Gaugan takes it, heads down the sideline, and cuts out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So one thing being down 7 nothing for NFA, at least they have the best field position they've yes. had on all the field position for them to start off with. And they've had some plays that were really close. That deep ball that had a chance in the middle of the field, as well as some run plays that could have broken away. You know, it's just that penalties and situations that they need to make a play, they didn't do it. So we'll see how they do in this series. Out of town scoreboard, the premier game in the ECC tonight. Fitch, 14, killingly 7. Hinkley, gonna keep it himself, direct snap, breaks a tackle, Hinkley lowers the shoulder, first down run, and that's where Hinkley was so right. tough last week. That, that's Wildcat football right there. Load up the line, make sure you can use those big linemen that you have there to push and have your quarterback run the ball. It's an overload. First down, Hinkley's gonna keep it himself again. Breaks a tackle, dragging, dragging. Gage Hinkley doing it himself, uh -huh. another first down for the Wildcats. A good grind on that play. Again, these guys are building their confidence on this run play, and they're sticking to it, and they're doing it with a tempo. It's not something that they're leaning back and waiting. Coach is getting them right there on the line and getting the play in and moving. First and 10, Wildcats in business. See, all they needed was decent field position. That's right. Spark that offense going right now. Direct snap to Sebastian. Big hole, big run, first down. Xavier Sebastian, and NFA, three runs, three first downs, and they are knocking on the door here to try to respond to the seven that East Lime just put up. Yeah, Wildcats found that the off-tackled zone is the one that's the weakest right now, so they're using both sides. When you have a four-man front, those are the areas you can attack to get to the linebackers. Hinkley, inside trap. Little reverse to Ryan Cleary. That'll gain a couple. Cleary on the carry, good for a gain of three on the play. So what do you actually call that? It's kind of a... So that's a counter. counter. Remember, in, in a double wing seven. or you wing T, um, you have that counter from that back. So it's like a counter trap to the back, weak side. They'll run that off tackle, load it all up, come back with him on the weak side to see if those linebackers are disciplined. Second down, Hinkley keeps it himself. So hard to tackle, Gage Hinkley. Well, these Wildcats have the momentum right now and they're moving fast. Again, their tempo is a little bit different from when they're starting right now. They're picking it up, linemen are getting right on the line and coach is calling the plays. That'll move the chains, first down at the 12 yard line. So NFA who couldn't, literally couldn't move the ball forward now has First downs, a plenty on this drive. Hinkley keeps it himself and a great tackle as he gets to the five yard line by Matlock. Thomas Matlock went down and got Hinkley at the hips. But another positive gain gets Hinkley to the six yard line. Casey, a little thing that I'm seeing right now, a lot of people don't see this in the field. They actually, you can see it probably in the coaching staff with film is that they are pretty much unbalanced. Their tackle on the right side is just the tackle while they load up to the strong side. Hinkley keeps it himself, driving inside the five yard line, close to a first down. Hinkley on the carry, good for a gain of two yards. 
So he gained two, he needed four. Third and two, ball is at the four yard line. And I would be shocked if you didn't see Hinckley <laughs> again here. Go with what got you there. Little side motion. This time it snapped to Sebastian. Sebastian cuts it back inside. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. Great series for the Wildcats on that one. Good job. What an answer from NFA right down the field. And they're an extra point away from tying this one up at seven. Whatever the coach said there during that series definitely worked out. They had an attitude. They came out there strong and physical, changed it up with some unbalance, and guess what? They outnumbered East Lime on that series. Supernaut with the extra point, and the extra point is good. With good it is, 7-7 seven, seven with 7.42 remaining. Seven. We'll be back. You're watching Game Day Live on Day.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. Seven seven as NFA answers East Lime's touchdown with a touchdown of their own, mm -hmm. and we'll see what the Vikings can do. Vikings. As it seems like Supernaut both offenses figured offense. a few things out yep. about their defensive counterparts. Supernaut will kick it off from his own forty for NFA. High comes down, Page. Page breaks tackles, crosses midfield. The speed from Greg Page. Great special teams play right there. The kicker, Supernaut, makes the tackle. You know, you could visibly see where you could attack both defenses now as they continue to show what they're doing. Um, you know, East Line right now giving up their off tackle area, and then the Wildcats giving up those play action plays. So we'll see if it's going to go back and forth that way. We've seen the speed of Greg Page. He scored that game-tying touchdown against Stonington on the jet sweep option pass from Alex Dreyfus. Page, dangerous, gives East Lyme great position here at midfield. McNamara will operate from the shotgun, and he's going to keep it himself. Crosses over the line of scrimmage, gains perhaps two. Not much there. Amato was there for the tackle. They're continuing to bring some backside pressure there and having that one-to-one -one matchup with the receiver, so it's still visible. The speed of the Wildcats are showing right now. I'm a little surprised that East Lime is not picking a little more on those single coverage to the outside. Mm -hmm. Handoff, Patterson, big hole up the middle, showing speed, it's a foot race, Patterson and York. Inside the five, looking for the pylon. He's shoved, waiting for the signal. Out of bounds, just shy. Woo, that was fast, brother. Unbelievable. Aiden Patterson was in a foot race with Neo York. He and he got him at the goal line. That's great. He was pressing hard to the right. Then he made that cut back. The safety overran it, and it was a run there. Great run there. Good job. So give York credit, not quitting on the play. The shove, the hard shove, the hard shove. was the only thing. The soft shove was not going to get him no, out of bounds. That probably got him right into the cone, right through it. But now East Lime has it on the one-yard line. See if they go back to Patterson to see if they can get him a touchdown. They're going to keep it with the quarterback instead, McNamara. Got to see where the pile is. They're deep in there. Everyone loves the Eagles tush push, which is probably going to be illegal next year. Touchdown, Touchdown Vikings, they're going to say McNamara broke the plane. And what an answer. We've had wow. touchdowns on three straight possessions. Boy, that's a firework session right there. <laughs> Talk about replies. So Bruno will come in for the extra point attempt. 13-7 East Line. 
thinking in the first quarter we were going to have like a, a real low scoring game and then all of a sudden out of nowhere. I was thinking it might be most yards wins. Yeah. <laughs> Bruno. Snap is low, but it's good. And the kick is up and true. 6.38 remaining in the half. 14-7, Vikings on top. How will the Wildcats answer? You'll find out on the other side. You're watching Game Day live on Day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit SciFCU.org to learn more. first six or seven possessions of this game, we wondered if either team would put something together offensively, and now we've seen three straight scoring drives, two from East Lime, one from NFA, and the Vikings have a 14-7 lead. Bruno will kick it off for the Vikings, and Goggin is back deep. Line drive. Stays in bounds, takes a little reverse bounce. Goggin picks it up at the 10-yard line. Makes two men miss, stays on his feet. Shows some good speed and gets it out to the 40-yard line where he's brought down by Logan Baird. That was a great return. Both kickoff return teams are making a lot of spark tonight. NFA essentially ran two different types of plays, right? They ran right. the Hinkley, and then they ran the yeah. counter. A that was it. Mixing it with some unbalance and, uh, you know, causing that defense to try to decide what was going on. I also thought that was probably something new that they didn't really have uh, prepared there in East Lime. Now they made some adjustments. As you can see, they added an extra defensive lineman. This time, handoff traditional straight up the gut. And nice gain on first down. Wildcats, down Magnus five, King, the ball carrier, only a freshman. What a push by that offensive line. There's some good game going on right there, just in the trenches alone. Hinkley keeps it himself, gets a first down, still on his feet, fat flag comes down. Hinkley is out of bounds, but we'll see what the flag is. Hinkley, dangerous and a threat to break it every single time. NFA says that's against East Lime, and it is face mask penalty. You saw Isaiah Kennedy, one of my favorite player, players here in the ECC for NFA. He, he's the charismatic guy that gets over the, near the officials. And yeah. what's going on, ref? What's yeah, going down? That's try, on them, right? Try that's to make the them. love in there. Try that's to make the love. That was a face mask, right? <laughs> was, all right. And he jumped up, showing everybody that's against them. That's against them. Sometimes great gestures in the game of football is being respectful to those referees because sometimes you'll get a call in your favor. So that penalty is a big one. It's going to put NFA all the way into the red zone, first and 10 at the 16-yard line of East Line. Hinkley hands off. Outside goes King. Showing speed to the far sideline, but can't quite turn it up. King run out of bounds at the nine yard Got line. to the nine yard line, so a good gain, seven yards. It'll bring up second five, and, second and four. they're gonna call it second and four. Go, big go, come on. And still with that offensive formation right there. There's the unbalance. Hinkley keeps it himself. Stutter steps and heads up the middle, and I think he'll have a first down, or at least be right at the sticks. We'll see where the mark is. It's either going to be third and short or first and goal. It's a first down. So chains will move. It's going to be first and goal, NFA. Ball at the six-yard line. Clock under five minutes remaining here in the half.
Direct snap, Sebastian, the diminutive one, cuts it back off the left tackle. Sebastian on the carry. And he'll get halfway there. Second and goal from the three. Again, Sebastian, tiny guy, dives for the end zone. Sebastian Touchdown, Wildcats! Woo! I like this running game. He is tiny, but he knows how to find a hole, and he can smell the end zone, and NFA a point away from tying it at 14. Great distribution for the ball carriers, too, mixing it up, knowing that it's not just one person or keying one person. For the extra point try. East Slime is still trying to find a way to decipher that offensive formation there. Watch Supernaut's leg, by the way. He doesn't try to get it through the end zone. He tries to fake in wide open. <laughs> Kinkley is the all holder. That's the quarterback. You played me. I got my eyes on the kicker, and then you set it up on the play action. That was great. What a setup there. Good opportunity with the defense being low on that play. They popped that play. Their special teams tonight has been really special. Ryan Cleary leaked out into the pattern. Hinkley stood up yeah. and found him. I had everybody looking at the kicker, but instead NFA jumps on top 15-14. Let's find out if East Lime can answer. <laughs> You're watching Game Day live on Day.com. The Day strives to cover stories our readers care about. With a feature called Curious CT, we make it easier for you to tell us what you want to know about the people, places, and issues in Southeastern Connecticut. You submit a question, readers vote, and we investigate and report. Go to theday.com slash CuriousCT for more details. You ask, you vote, we investigate. So talk a little bit here as NFA goes on top 15-14 and Supernaut will kick off. We're going to talk a little bit about what NFA has done offensively as an adjustment. Supernaut bangs it straight up the middle, and that's going to go all the way into the end zone, and that's where East Lyme will have it. So talk a little bit about what NFA is doing. Well, sometimes what they do is they add an extra lineman into the game, okay, and they kick him as a tight end. And sometimes some series what they do is they bump a guard over and there's two guards on one side, then get those guys to line down. Now, where would you line up? Usually we line up where the tight end lines up. In defense, we call it the strength. But in situations like that, it might be the opposite side, and that's where you're getting that overload or cutback opportunities that Wildcats have been doing in their series. East line, first and 10 at their own 20. Worst field position they've had. Yeah. Down a point. McNamara to throw in the flat, looking for Dreyfus. It's incomplete. McNamara's pass is in the number 24. I'll tell you, special teams have been really spooky. We have returners, kickers, punters, oh my, going everywhere today, <laughs> being the highlight of this uh, game so far. Second and 10. And we have a timeout. timeout East Line, East line with 4.05 remaining in the first out. half. We'll take a timeout as well. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientefcu.org to learn more. So with a little bit of chicanery, mm -hmm. some shenanigans, mm -hmm. the Wildcats have taken their first lead of the game, 15-14. East Lime trying to answer that with 4.05 remaining here in the half. They have a second and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Ronan McNamara, the quarterback of the Vikings, has Dreyfus come in motion. Toss out to Patterson. Patterson with a stiff arm gets to the sticks. He's close to the first down. 
And a flag that comes in. Run out of bounds after a gain of six. He had six penalty on the game. On the Let's field. see what the penalty flag is. Officials are conferring. And the answer to the question is that it looks like it's against. Oh, they're going to wave it. They're going to pick it up. No penalty on the flag. All right, pick up the flag. So I think they saw Patterson <laughs> stiff arm to the face mask. And Patterson was saying, I didn't grab. I, I just extended and kept my hand flat. I didn't do it. <laughs> And they listened for yeah, he was right. Well, he was right. You know, he's, he did. he's such a vocal young man. He was right. They he said, well, that's case there. Well, if you're going to make sense, then okay. Yeah. So a gain of six, third and four. NFA wants to dial up pressure, and I think they got East Lime to move. False start. And that's been uh, the fourth false start against East Lime. I think they are a little jumpy it's towards the pressure that nine. NFA mm -hmm. is showing. But that's a big one because it goes from third and short all the way back to third and long up to third and nine. NFA has everybody up. There's no safety involvement here. Something like this, a screen or a, a vertical pass would really create a problem right here for the NFA. Look, just like this. Petrini breaks a tackle, heads down the sideline, cuts inside of York, looking for a block, breaks another tackle. Nick Petrini, stud! Touchdown, Vikings! Awesome play, wow. Again, zero coverage works well when you can stop the run. But in passing situations like that, you're going to have one-to-one -one matchups that are not balanced. And in that situation, they got burnt. The Wildcats felt the heat on that play. Much like the, the when, when you sell out on the run on those fourth and inches plays and the guy busts through and there's no one there, Petrini, exactly. once he made the initial guy miss, yep. all it was was a foot race and poor Nehemiah York Nemo was out on that island trying to catch up, and he had blocker. I mean, it was impossibility. It was impossible, yep. And then Petrini showed size, strength, vision. There's the mismatch. I mean, it's one thing to be fast, but to be fast, strong, and have good vision. That's he did it all. Package. Bruno in for the extra point, and this time they get NFA to jump and get over that line. So East Lime. New NFA kept dialing up that pressure mm -hmm. and getting them to jump. They went hard count, froze it. Yep. And this time, and they, oh, they're calling it against the offense again. So guess what? I was wrong. That's all right. Everybody's been moving tonight. You know, we don't know what's going on right there with that flavor. But that's East Lime went freeze crazy. and still jumped. Yeah. That's that lineman that's going to get the extra hills yeah, or yeah. sleds. You never know. I suggest sending him to the Norwich yeah. Golf Course, as we found out yesterday oh, at the yeah. ACC Championships, that that hill is quite something. They all talked about, all the runners talk about the hill. You know, the whole year, the year they spend getting ready for that hill that just ate them up. Mm -hmm. And if it's into the wind, that hill can be even worse. There's, I mean, I don't run generally. I, well, I haven't run anywhere in a long time. <laughs> but into the wind was never fun. Bruno with a long extra point. Good snap, good hold, line drive, kick is through. And with 3.15 remaining in the first half, we've got ourselves a shootout all of a sudden. 21-15 Vikings. We'll be back after this. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off-season, and game day has no off-season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. 3.15 remaining here in half number one and what looked like it might be whatever is even lower than a defensive battle has turned into an offensive shootout. Heck yeah, every point has counted here today. You know, we're talking about the three levels of play with special teams, the center and all that coordination. You know, missing a piece there can create a lot of problems. But even in this situation, it's been a big factor for this game as special teams has been really dominant in showing. Yeah, I think the first five series were all about defense. Right. Since then, it's been all offense, but the special teams has been what's allowed the offense to thrive. Right. 
East Lime goes with a little onside kick, trying to get it back, but it's recovered and fallen on by Simon Lowenstein. And NFA will have good field position at their own 45. To me, that's the danger of that play right there is mm -hmm. with 315, you've given them a short field. Yeah, you don't want to do this with their running offense right now, being that, that, that energy that's making this team and the fans here play. And NFA is content, has been very content running the football and not throwing it. Hinkley will operate from the shotgun. First down, handoff. Magnus King is eaten up. The Vikings <coughs> get him for a loss of two. Yeah, they jumped off from that formation, running their base part formations that they had. And again, the numbers, it just seems to be that, that East Lime's in the right spot with their positions. They're good when they're in, in, in their basic formations, but when it comes to crunching those guys down, man, mano a mano football, the favorite goes to the Wildcats side. Second and 11. Clock now, tick 235 here before NFA will get off its second down play. Hinkley's going to keep it himself. Off right tackle, has a big hole. Now Gage shows some speed. Guess what? Gage is gone. Touchdown. Wow, explosive play. Dang. No flags, Gage Hinkley to the house. Who would have thought two minutes left? We were at 42 points in the game from that first quarter, brother. Now I East, Li <laughs> East Live still got 220. They're thinking they got, yeah. they got a chance. Boy. All right, I'm going to say this again, however. <laughs> Watch the extra point. What, what? I got my eyes on him. Because he kicks the extra point angry. I've never seen an aggressive extra point before. Watch the aggressive extra point. All the way down, close to the <laughs> scoreboard. Wow, he's got pop. A lefty. 219 remaining here in the first half. 22-21 NFA on top of East Lime. We will keep it here. Uh, you know, NFA Man, has <laughs> decided we're just going to run the ball because we can. Yeah. And that right there, that play right there is indicative of what Hinkley did last week so dangerous he too is a blend of speed and power I mean, great great vision and East Lime had gotten so used to those tackle to tackle right they got caught that time when he bumped it outside there was mm -hmm. nobody there yeah sealing the deal the lineman did a great job when he got in their blocks to turn their hips to the play and let that running back just scheme like a, a surfer going right through that wave and as soon as he broke away that that speed just took over that wasn't Cadillac move that was a Maserati Supernaut will kick off from his own 40-yard line. Bullet down the middle. Page knocks it down, picks it up, and he's dancing, but he's not going to go anywhere. Maybe almost back to the 20-yard line. Page returns the ball. This is a great opportunity for NFA with this field position to Tana. To the 18-yard line. Where the See if they can kill this time for the half. What a shootout today. This is great. Great football. Let's see what NFA does defensively, by the way. Are they going to stay single coverage, tight, no safeties? Now they're still playing man-to-man. -man. It looks like they're just going to stay right there. The safeties are actually playing a little bit softer than they were, knowing that this distance can help them out. Pressure shown from the outside. McNamara to throw. In the flat again, this time to Dreyfus. Dreyfus has it, first down. And he'll cross the 30 to the 31 yard line. The chains Back will move. This pass is complete to number 24, Alex Dreyfus. Now that the safeties are playing back, that out route is more Still easier to throw, knowing that the pressure for the quarterback is not there. So this is something that they could probably march down and work their way with this defensive coverage that the Wildcats are showing here. First and 10. McNamara rolls right, throws, complete to Matlock. Matlock. And, and they're going to measure, measure it or give him a first down, or are we going to be just short? So East Lime will call a timeout. 
And with that, we'll take a quick timeout. Time East Line time. moving the football. 134 remaining, 22 21 NFA. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. One thirty-four remaining here in the first half. East Lime with a second and one at their own 40-yard line. They trail NFA 22 to 21. Neither team came out of the gate with any offensive cohesiveness, but it has been a shootout since. McNamara to throw, pressured. Gets rid of it and incomplete. He was looking McNamara's for Leon. And that was a heads up play by McNamara to get it out there the and avoid the sack. Line. NFA yeah. sent everyone. The Wildcats sent that zero coverage again. They brought a lot of pressure. They broke through that offensive line like butter. It's gonna be third and one. Ball sits again at the 40 yard line. McNamara not sure what he wants. They're going to have to get a playoff here sooner. They're going to need to call a timeout. Handoff. Patterson. Patterson breaks a tackle. Patterson off to the races, crosses the 30, and out of bounds, the 22 yard line. Aiden Ooh. Patterson, the diminutive one, shows the Jets. <laughs> He is elusive. Boy, did he, it looked like he was going to get caught in the line, and he just swims right through with that speed. So with 117, my goodness, there's plenty of time. There might be enough time for two possessions. Both these teams must have had, like, turbo boost in their, in their gas tanks just right after that series. Unbelievable how these plays are explosive right now. This is a great game so far. This is like in The Princess Bride. Yeah. This is... I am also not left-handed. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. The sword, the sword fight. <laughs> that's what they right now. Indigo. <laughs> Both of them just realized. All right, we'll, let, we'll, we'll show let's the others our cards. Show our best. McNamara rolls, pressured, rolls, throws, and incomplete. He just was getting rid of it. Good coverage McNamara by NFA. Is then why are you smiling? Because I know something you do not know. That's right. <laughs> I am not left-handed. I'm not left-handed either. <laughs> so here comes a second and 10. They're marked at the 23. I'd say 10 more yards gets East Lime within a realistic field goal attempt. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think he's got the leg for it from here, but when you get out this far, you see so many blocks and things because mm -hmm. the, the timing doesn't quite happen right. At least the weather is beautiful tonight. I thought it was going to be raining bad the way this afternoon was. You had yeah. to say something, didn't you? I know. I know. Hand off. Patterson cuts to the outside. Breaks another tackle. Dives <laughs> out of bounds. First down. Aiden Patterson. Gain of 12. And that's going to give East Lime a first and goal. 105 here in the first half. And the offensive explosion is continuing right before our eyes. This explosion would be great with a good torrential storm in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's looking at me like, nah, bro, that ain't gonna happen. You don't so get to sit under the tent if it starts <laughs> raining. <laughs> only the equipment, only the uh, equipment gets the I'm tent. I'm digging that, I'm digging that, you're right. <laughs> so it's gonna be first and goal from the 10 yard line. McNamara has Patterson to his left. Hands off to Patterson, Patterson breaks a tackle. Dragging down to the five yard line, Terrence Brown. And it's going to be second and goal from the five as the clock is now running under a minute. There it is. Got to pick up the tempo. Patience, the Vikings. 
McNamara rolling, rolling, looking for man, keeps it himself, cuts it back, and he is pounded. And we're going to get a flag. I think we're going to get a helmet to helmet. A gain of two, but that penalty is going to change things. And I'll tell you right now, he got popped. McNamara yeah. got popped. I'm happy he just got right back up there because uh, that was a big hit. This is his teammate right now making sure he's okay. Patterson's just making sure that McNamara is all right. What resiliency. He took a pop and he got right back up. Personal foul penalty against NFA is a blow to the head. So that's a personal foul, blow to the head. It's going to move it up as, you know, as close to the goal line as it can get. McNamara will stay in the game as he popped right back up off that hit. But it will be first and goal right on the goal line at the one yard line. So it'll be second down, ball at the one. And that's something I disagree with. That should be an automatic first down. Should be an automatic first down. It's penalizing them because they're on the goal line. So right. now it's second and goal. They gain two yards for one of the most dangerous plays. Well, that's a Bill Belichick move right there. Direct oh, snap to Dreyfus, pushing him towards the end zone. I think he's in. I'm waiting for the signal. They're sorting it out. We're looking, we're looking. Touchdown, Vikings! Alex Dreyfus with 22 seconds remaining in the half. Wow. Man, these series here are like goosebumps in this Halloween evening. <laughs> well, Coach Bagos promised that there were some plays in the playbook designed to yeah. get the ball into 24's hands. There's one on the goal line. That was a great one. Motion got right under the center real quick. That's something that defense is not ready. Never expect that to happen. Just enough to get him right through the end zone. Got to break the plane. That's all you need. Finn Bruno in for the extra point. Critical point here. Good snap. Good hold. The kick is up. And wide right. He shoved it. And with 22.6 seconds remaining, the Vikings have jumped on top. We got a whole other half to go. But we'll take a quick break. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on game day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game day, launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do. And that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Killingly 28, Fitch 21, or is it the other way around there, Peter? Fitch 28, Killingly 21. Woo, what a game over there, huh? In another exciting ball game here, it's 27-22. NFA just saw East Lime punch it in with 22 seconds remaining, but NFA... I was just saying, gonna get this kickoff here, and uh, I wonder if East Lyon was gonna kick it off to him, or you know, NFA is gonna try to score with 22 I, seconds. I left. would be smart enough to do a squib kick, get it to just a second level. You know, you still have 60 yards to cover, but that kills some time. Bruno will kick it off. Line drive up the middle, taken by the up man at the 30. And into Vikings territory to the 44-yard line. Caloro with the return, and you know, 16 seconds left. Woo. I know they're going to do a direct. You know they're going to direct snap it, see what happens. Got to get it there. I mean, they have speed. Let's just see what East Line plays for coverage. I know that they're going to definitely have some uh, D-backs deep here. I'd have four across at the 20. Yeah and don't have Gronk out there, mind you. That's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ball is at the East Line, 45-yard line. Hinkley is in the shotgun here, standing at his own 50. He's going to keep it himself. 
breaks one tackle and then wrestled to the ground after a gain of three, maybe four. Timeout NFA with 10 seconds remaining here in the game. So let's just try to summarize this, what we saw. Page one. <laughs> in the first three possessions for NFA and in the first three possessions for East Lyme, East yeah. Lyme did not complete a pass nor gain a positive yard on the ground. The defense looked like Alabama and Michigan. They were just playing. NFA was burdened with terrible field position, uh -huh. all of their possessions, and also did not complete a pass and gained under 10 yards, did not get a first down. Right. The first first down of the game came on a penalty. Right. What a spark, huh? <laughs> then, through the magic of, I don't know, modern science. And good play calling. <laughs> or the references to Tech Mobile, whatever yep. it might be. I'm going with Tech Mobile. East Lime <laughs> finds Petrini, gets on the board. Right. And if A comes right back. Like a ping pong. And goes right down the field <laughs> and gets four first downs on four runs, yep. punches it in. Razzle dazzle, straight downhill. East line comes right back, and Aiden Patterson decides to, yep. to do Barry, Long to be Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders run, yeah. <coughs> Get that little gallop in him. And if A comes right back, goes right down the field, Hinkley and scores, speed, and then speed, punches speed. it in with Sebastian. Yep. Then Petrini decides to be Calvin Johnson. Right. Great and catch. then, and okay, I'm, I'm I'm done. That's it. We can't go any further than that. <laughs> Eleven seconds. Hinkley's going to keep it himself. He's rolling, looking, not sure if he's going to throw it. Now he does. Inbounds, and we're going to get a flag. This pass intended for King is incomplete. Looks like it's probably a lineman downfield on that play while they were rolling out a couple of big guys with the 70s and the 50s. We're past that line of scrimmage. Let's see what the call is. Ineligible, downfield Ineligible man downfield. 3.6 you know, seconds. It's a really tough situation for offensive linemen in that capacity. They're one mindset go at it and when you have a quarterback rolling out the first thing as a lineman is we're going to go block because we think that's what's going to happen so you know tough penalty for them right now Three point six remaining in the half second and 11 three and a half seconds remaining we'll see if nfa really try something or well, what they're going to really timeout try is call pass. a timeout <laughs> that's their second charge timeout that's their second timeout so i'm very impressed with both teams' resiliency in that they went from being inept to suddenly being multifaceted and, and responding, yeah, right? They're, you know? they're so pumping points. 22 points for NFA, 27 for East Lime, and we still have a whole other half of football. Yeah. I mean, this is what football is all about anyway. It's a storyline within four quarters of how, you know, the intelligence of two teams, big teams in our league, that have the tradition and the pride that they hold, going into a territory where you know the pressure's on, and to be able to, you know, perform in this manner is what, what makes ECC football, uh, you know, my favorite sport to watch. Well, I know what NFA's done differently. NFA yeah. switched to decide they're gonna go direct snap to Hinkley, run the occasional counter, run the occasional. Right. And they're, that's how they've changed things. Yeah. East Lime's not doing anything different. I think we'll see, what'll be interesting is does NFA change up defensively in the second half? Exactly. All right, should be the last play of the first half. Hinkley's gonna throw it. Deep down the sideline, into double coverage, and it's incomplete off the receiver's fingertips. He was looking for Galgan. We're at halftime. We are gonna get some Gatorade and replenish. We got a flag on the play, or we doesn't. Penalty flag on the play. A late flag. So we're no Gatorade for you yet. Oh my God, my mouth is dry. But when we do go to halftime, <laughs> you're going to want to stick around. We're going to have the NFA band as well as mm -hmm. some of our features, and then we'll be back, of course, with three pounds of pasta. So we are at halftime. Stay tuned for some features, then the NFA band, and then three pounds of pasta on the other whoop, side. Whoop. You're watching Game Day live on the Day.com. Of this game. When I wasn't the coach here and I knew that the opening came, I was watching film and, and I saw Gage and, and saw that he was a sophomore at the time and I was like, 
that's definitely a guy that I could build a program around, and that's a guy that we could win games with. So one of the main reasons that I applied to the NFA job was because of the, the skill set that I saw of Gage on film before I even had the job. I coached at Bacon Academy, and I had Tom Saracena, who was a tight end, defensive end guy, went on to play at, at uh, Southern Connecticut. And when I saw him on film, I, I, I actually called Tom's dad and said, I found Tom 2.0. And so I came here, and at first I, had, I wanted to play running back, but I had no clue, and they had no clue. So I went straight to linebacker, and that was my sophomore year. And then junior year, quarterback, running back, out, the end, outside linebacker. And this year, playing some slot, some outside running back again and some DNs. So, I mean, I've been all over the place. For a coach, it's it's awesome because, yeah, you you know that one one play you could snap the ball to him, the next play you could put him in motion, the next play you could line him out wide, and then the next play you could have him in some kind of random running back position. So, for a coach, it's awesome, but I do feel somewhat bad for him because he can't get comfortable in one role, you know, but we got to utilize him where we can best take advantage of the matchups that week. So he's all over for, for us on offense. But for him, it's a little bit disadvantage as far as being able to get game film for, for colleges at one position. But, but for us, it's a coach's dream. So I'm here right now, and so I think i got to live in the moment. And so I've just balanced what's best for NFA. And I'm, I kind of just try to show coaches that I'm an athlete at the next level and that it is hard to get recruited at a higher level when you're, you know, they're, they're shopping for positions and I'm playing a lot of them. But... I just try to tell them, you know, I do whatever's best for the team. Go. You got to be great on the field, but you also got to be great off the field. You know, you can't you can't just put one aspect and expect to be a leader or anything like that. Kids kind of follow what he's going to do. And I saw that last year as a junior. I named him captain as a junior. He's captain as a senior. So just that leadership in the weight room, in the film room, on the field kind of makes him an all-around great person, but a great athlete and a great student. Dominate on me. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. Dominate. My dad was the coach of me when I, I was growing up playing football. You know, we'd have the same routine every day. He'd uh, tie my cleats for me. We'd talk a little bit, like have fun, just go out there, play your game. And, uh, you know, that was the same year after year. And uh, when I got into high school, I had to choose kind of, like baseball, basketball, football. I was like, what do I really want to do when I'm older? What's best for me? So I chose baseball, you know, focus on that. And, uh, after my freshman sophomore year, I was, was missing it, loving it so much. You know, get out, go out there, get to hit some kids. You know, get to do whatever you want. And uh, so I decided to go out and play last year. One of the things I always try to tell kids is play as many sports as you can. I think high school is the best time to play. And um, you learn a lot from doing from different sport to sport to sport, and it can help you. Having Alex be able to do two sports is huge. I think it's going to help him. It gives him a little break and works different muscles and stuff and helps him get a little bit of anger out hitting some kids in the football field too. Keeps me active in the school year because when I was playing baseball my freshman sophomore year, I kind of just went home, ate, maybe go to the gym, and it was the same routine, it was getting boring. And when you're playing two sports, three sports, you know, you're just like socializing with your friends more, you just get like more um, memories in high school. I mean, you only get to do this once in a lifetime, so I mean, might as well just do it now. He wasn't sure if he was going to come back this year. And he was leaning towards not playing. And we talked, and he's still committed to baseball, and I get that. And there's some days he has to leave early. And uh, I talked to the seniors, and I said, listen, he can come back and wants to come back, but there's going to be some days that he has to leave. And, if, and it's up to you guys. If you want him back, let him. And if not, I get it. And emphatically, they said yes. He was just, uh, he's that kind of player that kids can rally around. When you were growing up in the youth leagues, what position were you, did you play? Um, I was wide receiver. Uh, linebacker, DN, wherever they needed me to play, I played. But never quarterback. Never quarterback. So the, the ace pitcher on the mound, but can't can't throw the. Football. No, can't throw a football to save my life. He doesn't think he throws a football that well, but he does. Uh, that's why we put that play in against Stonington that we put in, and uh, he put it perfectly. Uh, he doesn't give himself enough credit, but he can throw the football. That was fun. That was awesome. You know, the first time I've ever thrown a ball in high school it was a touchdown. It's pretty cool. Without giving any specifics, can can we expect a package, a, a, you know, down the road here <laughs> that might involve uh, Alex, you know, uh, in some more, mis you know, misdirection? Well, I like, I like, you know me, I'm not a stranger to trickery, so I can say that he'll probably be involved in another player too. Well, we're at halftime, and NFA's band is wearing Viking helmets. Woo! 
Wildcats and the Vikings. Let's look at some Wildcats being Vikings. Enjoy the band. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the NFA Wildcat Marching Band. the Norwich Free Academy Wildcat Marching Band.
Championship hardware on the line Thursday afternoon at the Norwich Golf Course. Six-time champions East Lyme looking to defend their ECC cross-country title. Plenty of talented runners in the field looking to dethrone the Vikings. We are from St. Bernard's and no one can be prouder. And if you cannot hear us, we'll shout a little louder. A beautiful sunny afternoon in Norwich with a light breeze. Last year's individual champ. Waterford junior Avery May is out to the front of the path at the start, along with Lyman Memorial senior Hazel DeLucia, who finished fifth last year. Fall colors starting to pop out on the golf course and four minutes in. Looks like it's shaping up to be a two-person race with DeLucia and Mays already putting considerable distance on the field. I was just really happy to be here. Um, I was really sick last year, so this just felt like a redemption race, and I knew I had to get out fast and my, I just really was going to get out and see what I could do and just kind of redeem myself from last year. At the six minute mark, Delucia makes her move heading up the notorious long hill on the golf course's fourth fairway, starting to put some separation between herself and Mays. I did so many hills this summer <laughs> simply just to prepare for this race. Long hills, short hills, I just I needed to be ready because this hill ate me up last year and I was going to be ready for that this year. <laughs> Those hill workouts seem to have paid off as Delucia charges up one of the last inclines on the course well ahead of the rest of the field. Delucia coming down the stretch all by herself to the finish line. When you crossed the finish line, it looked like you were a little over, overcome. Is that right or, or, or not? Like I said, I was sick last year, and um, I just, to prove to myself that I could do this, um, it just, it felt really, really good. Waiting at the finish line was mom, Stephanie Johnson DeLucia, the class double L champion in 1992 and a member of NFA's 1995 New England championship team, but who never won the ECC title. My mom was one of the most amazing runners I've ever known. Um, I'm so lucky that she's my mom, and I think, I thank her every day for all the advice she gives me. 
Um, she was just, it doesn't matter if she, if she won ECCs or not, she was the best runner I've ever met. Mays finished second. Great job, Walker, great job. Stonington's Peyton Vanderstreet took third. Ledyard's Ella Stevenson finished sixth with teammates Kate Littler in ninth and Josephine Withbro in tenth, clinching the Colonel's first team title since 1989. I came into it um, knowing we were the str stronger team, um, but actually having to, you know, everybody's got to, you know, everybody's got to do their job on race day and everybody's got to have a good day and, you know, anything can happen during a race and you can only control what you can control. Um, so I was nervous, of course, and everybody else was, but I knew we could do it and we did. 109 runners lining up for the ECC Boys Cross Country Championship Thursday at the Norwich Golf Course. And with last year's two top finishers graduating, we were guaranteed a new individual champ. East Lyme, the favorites to win their sixth straight team title, but their top returning runner, last year's third place finisher, Sean McCauley, was a question mark after missing time with an ankle injury. He ran two races early on and they were pretty conservative and then he had the uh, the Achilles, which, you know, it wasn't anything super major, but we're always going to be cautious with that. Um, and so he just started training again about, you know, maybe 10 days ago, 12 days ago, and like really training. Early on, Macaulay, part of a three-person lead pack, along with Woodstock Academy's Christian Menounos and Griswold's Tyson LaBelle. I knew it would be a very fast race because it's Christian and Tyson, very, very talented people. And going into this race, I had no idea, like, what my plan was, I was just gonna base it off of uh, like who did what and like who started out fast, who didn't. He's probably the most talented distance runner I've ever coached, and he just loves it. And you know, I think he just he has a tremendous amount of trust in himself and in the program. So I think that you know that kind of shown through today. That leading trio staying tightly grouped through the first two miles, waiting to see who would try to make a move first. Up the hill and into the home stretch, it was McCauley deciding to go for it. I was just trying to wait, just keep waiting and waiting until I thought it was the right time to go. And I went, and once you go like that, you can't turn back, you can't, you, like, like you just gotta go, you know? So that's what I did, um, and I just tried to uh, just finish strong. McCauley was first across the line, one of five East Line runners in the top 10 leaving no doubt about the team championship, the sixth straight for the Vikings. Three years ago when Luke Anthony was a senior, there was a huge shift in the program of these kids that they wanted to be runners. They didn't want to just do this as an after-school activity. You know, they wanted to run in college and they wanted to run post-collegiately and they, they wanted to learn about, you know, workouts and training. And, and I think when you put that mindset together, with a group that's obviously very talented, you can have a lot of fun. We're at halftime, 27-22, East Ooh. Lime on top of NFA, and it's time for my favorite part of halftime, three pounds ah. of pasta. Yummy. I get to ask three questions of the coach, and they have something to do with football, or maybe nothing to do with football at all, and everything to do with his viewpoints. Let's start off I'm with ready. pound one, number one. Give it to me. We mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that East Lime's linebacker, Thomas Matlock, Woo, was the state open shot put champion. Right. If you could take any sport, any position of any sport to make them a position in football, what would you take? For example, we've seen the you know, the sprint champion, put him at wide receiver. Yes, yes. What would be the optimal sport <sighs> transfer? I love wrestlers things about wrestlers that in, that I enjoy is that they have the same kind of technical style uh, that they could play in football and they become great tacklers once they learn how to play the game so if I was to start a base of a defense you know and I had to take it from another sport I would take a good amount of wrestlers like the wild Samoans the wild Samoans or uh, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan drop an elbow. I can see the that giant, the drop an elbow bottom. yeah okay we get the good wrestlers there. But, you know, high school wrestling to me is, is probably the most athletic sport. So to take players from that, I've seen a lot of great special team players that participated in wrestling and utilized that in football was a, a special thing. I would take a sumo wrestler and make him a hockey goalie. That could be good. That's a good one. 
How's it going to score? How's I'm anyone going to score? And, and they do splits, mind you. People think that they're just big guys. I watch it every other month. Mind you, it's going to be this month. I, I tell up. them to sit there and eat a ham sandwich. How's yeah. anybody going to score on them? That's just my, my own perspective. All right. Yep. Second pound of pasta. I want you to reach into your movie history. All right. Any movie series. Rocky would be a good example. Okay, of movie right. series. Let's do it any right series at all. If you could take the main characters and cast yep. of any movie series and make a football team out of them, Ooh. who would you take? Well, that, them crews from the Expendables were pretty good. I mean, those guys there. See, but you, you know what? The Magnificent Seven would be another You're thinking group. too literally. I'm going Lord of the Rings, and my orcs wow. are going to kick your butt all day long. See, but long. you're using magic there. That's that's that's, 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 that's part of no me. No one said, you, hey, but listen, you know expand what? your mind. Speaking of which, there's been a lot of magic in this half, so I could say you're right. That's pretty true. You know, I just like like a core of men that really are like, you know, the dirty dozen. You know, those guys that, you know, were probably outcasted, but when they go in a team, everybody sees them as like, watch out. See, I'm thinking Han Solo at quarterback, oh Chewie at tight end, Darth Darth Vader's a strong safety. Obi-Wan calling it from the top. And R2-D2 off right, off uh. right tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Poor right. Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> last, last. Yeah, what, a, what a great left tackle Jabba the Hutt would Jabba be. Jabba would cover uh, it. Michi Mom, cover. <laughs> you know, like that. <laughs> All right, we're almost here at halftime, so this last – Bit of pasta. We'll have Peter Wappy come in for the little extra bit as well. What would be, in your mind, the single worst possible food to serve at a concession stand of a high school football game? Asparagus tips. <laughs> you know no one will want to go to the bathroom after that. <laughs> Peter, what's the worst possible food to serve at halftime here at a concession stand? Oh, see, I was thinking that those – Grilled asparagus would be kind of delicious right about now. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolute worst soup. 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 The, way, the way you of said any, it sounds any like kind, that. Any. Just soup. He said soup. Oh, a nice beef barley would be delicious right now. Yeah. I'm going to say, uh, honestly, it's those uh, hot dogs that have been sitting in the rack for a while. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that, they actually, that they actually serve. You're right. The, so, wiz the wizard the, fingers? The ones the wiz that turn into <laughs> Slim Jims? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the penalty at the end of the first half was right. enforced on the kickoff, which exactly. allowed East Lime to kick it through the end zone. So NFA will have it, and they'll have it at their own 20. Yep. Now, to recap the first half, NFA's entire offensive identity switched when they went beast, which is right. when they brought in the extra size and they used Hinkley as a runner, and a couple of different yep. offensive uh, handoff sets to it, but they essentially took it out of the air. So, of course, on cue, they come out in the second half with this. The Florida Muddle Huddle right there. And because the football gods are, do not appreciate any of it, it's a <laughs> loss of two. You know, things like that, I don't know why you would set it up off the first play. These are things that you would use in the course of the game to create confusion, to get in offsides. But I guess they were trying to do something with it. And a quick screen? Eh, I don't know. Let's just say East Line played that very well. I need a minute. Yeah, take a deep breath on that one. Yeah. yeah. So what, what we were saying was that <laughs> NFA in the last four possessions that they had were unstoppable in the formation that they ran. So uh, they decided to do some... Trickery on I the think this down. is the one you're looking for, the beast yeah, formation yeah, we're back right here. To beast formation. There we go. Nice tackling there by East Lime, however, on King, and not much there. Back to the original line of scrimmage, third and ten. East Lime did a good job during halftime. I could tell already they made the adjustments to the strength call there, so they're utilizing it and making sure that they have those gaps covered right now. I think that they have that play. Uh, pretty much stuff. Now but the again, the counter to that, The though. counter would be a problem. You have to be disciplined. So if that guy continues a pursuit, that counter could come back and create disruption. And this is where the snap to Hinkley, where he starts strong right. and then counters the other direction. Counters back by you. If he breaks a tackle, he's, we've seen that he can be very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, early timeout here for East Lime on third down. So it, we're going to uh, keep it here right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was walking past the – concession stand, the aforementioned concession stand. Had it smell over there. And all I wanted, it was very it was very nice. They have a lot of good stuff over there, but all I wanted was something for my for my throat. Yeah, yeah. And sure. so I was going to get some Starburst, so, you know, every couple of plays I can just throw a Starburst exactly. in there. Exactly. You know. Except, in front of me were homemade giant chocolate chip cookies. Was that a UFO you was carrying over here? It, it's size, <laughs> I mean, it's the size of a really good pancake. Pancake, that's, that's a If a pancake is any smaller than that cookie, it's not a good pancake. That's right. not quite a hubcap, 
Not a hubcap. Not quite a manhole cover. Not a Captain America shield. No, but but it, but big enough to stop to stop a bullet. That's it. That would top at least cover a small pot for boiling water. It would it would cover a small pot. And go. I uh, and I might have had to bring one back. I mean, I, I just listen. It's all about supporting. It's about supporting the kids. Is what that's about. Amen. Now, did you eat one over there and back? <laughs> I saw him like doing something inside of his like, mouth there to brush it off. I can't confirm or deny. Hinkley over the middle, man open is Cleary. Cleary is going to have a first down, and that's a big play on third and ten for NFA. Hinkley found Cleary over the middle, and he did the rest. 30-yard gain. Awesome receiver routes. That's called a double cross. Both inside slot receivers crossed over, made a linebacker to make a choice, and he threw it to the open receiver. Good play there. That's the way you kind of stop a 4-3 coverage where the linebackers don't stay in their zone. They continue to run with the, re the, the receiver. And, of course, this is where we see the response to East Lime's response. Mm -hmm. Off right tackle. Hinkley hit quickly. Gain of one when Brendan Pennington wrapped him up. Second and nine. No, Edwards. So I think we're going to see an, an adjustment from East Lime mm -hmm. to that beast package. Right. The question is, what will NFA's answer to that adjustment be? Will it be throwing the ball like he did on third and ten? Mm -hmm. Or will NFA stay, I hate to stay the word committed, but will they stay disciplined enough to stay in that set but run other plays off? Second and nine. Hinkley, big hole. It's a race between him and Page. Gage, Hinkley, to the house. Touchdown, Wildcats. Gage Hinkley. What a run. 58 yards out. 58 yard wow. touchdown run. And you know how you know he's fast? Because I know Greg Page is fast, and Greg Page couldn't catch him. No. Gage Hinkley with a big touchdown run, and we start half two right where we ended half one. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> <laughs> NFA back on top. Super not in for the extra point. Let's see if he hits the school. Oh, it's going out there. It's going to hit the uh, one bouncer. Not bad. It's good, and with 9.27 remaining in quarter three, NFA 29, East Lime 27. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. Yeah, we're just uh, watching NFA here jump on top, 29-27, uh, with a package that East Lime has really not figured out what to do against. It's not sometimes it's as simple as my guys can beat your guys. Exactly. When we do this, when, if we do it right, we win. Yep. That ball's live. Page let it go. Recovered in the end zone, and they're going to say touchback. Well, that should be a touchdown. Let's, let's see what the officials are saying here. First down, East Lime. NFA doesn't understand because we watch pros and we watch college. Right. And we don't know what the high school rule is. So it seemed like the East Lime receiver that fell on the ball, his body ended up touching the end zone, which the contact automatically there becomes a touchback. That's so. what I thought, too. Yeah. I thought by making, I thought he slid into the end zone right. with it. Yeah. While, but... The NFA, the uh, East Lime return person uh, did not realize that that was not in the end zone yet, and it was a live ball. In kickoff, we all know that anything that gets to that white line in the end zone becomes a dead ball. And so, therefore, his body touching it, getting in the end zone, put it into a touchback, which actually saved East Lime because it could have been at the one-yard line, if anything. Result of the play is a touchback. East Lime will have it first and ten from their own 20. <laughs> so... The ball was live when Page let it go, thinking it was going to bounce into the end zone, and it actually died at the one-yard line. But when the East Lime second return man dove onto the ball, or made the attempt on the dome ball, dove on the ball, he was touching the end zone end line, which makes it a touchback. Yeah. 
It's really sad because NFA would have had a great advantage from it, but that's just the rules of the game in that one. First down. Nothing there for Patterson. Ball might have slipped out there. We're waiting to see. Officials already pointing in the other direction, so. <laughs> Young man from NFA making sure. Oh, well, a couple more times, see if it works. Nope. Right back in that huddle. Awesome. Patterson is uh, shaking up. Second down and 11 from the 19. It's going to be second and 11 from the 19. But Patterson there got rolled up and folded up, and he's a little, a little slow to come off the field, but he is coming off the field of his own accord. So it's going to be second and 11. McNamara will have Malachi Harris in the backfield with him on this second down play. McNamara rolls right, throws, complete to Matlock, and he is upended. Matlock had the completion, good game, but Nemo York was on the tackle. We have an injured player down on the field. <coughs> After the hit, Matlock is still not on the ground, so they're going to attend to him. So we're going to have a quick break in the action while they attend to Thomas Matlock. We're going to take a quick time out. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. So on the first two offensive plays, East Lyme loses their running back, Aiden Patterson, and their one of their tight ends, Thomas, uh, Thomas Matlock. So let's see how they respond. The good news is it appears that Patterson is heading back into the ball game while they attend to Matlock, who is walking on the sideline of his own court. It's going to be third and four. Ball is going to be at the 25-yard line. And the officials have flag on the play. thrown a flag. I don't know what the flag is yet, but it's against NFA. Could be probably. It's a personal know. foul. So if I'm not mistaken, what they're talking about is the way the tackle happened and that that person was a potential uh, player getting hit since he wasn't seeing the... Uh, off as a player, he got hit, kind of blindsided on his legs, and that could be something that they thought was um, defenseless receiver rule. That's right. So I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to ask this question, not as a, not certainly as angry dad from the stands, but a, yeah. how do I make a tackle of a guy who, whose head isn't around me yet? Well, that's the thing. The, the referees are keying on the ability that the receiver, once he gets the ball in control, would face forward to the defender. If he's not, then that's the objective of the, the, the judge of the call. Uh, for the referee that if he doesn't see him make that turn that could affect the play and he can get the penalty so Patterson on the far sideline got shoved out of bounds deep and some players are over there now on the far sideline trying to work things out and that's never a good situation we want to keep everybody safe over our, on both sides and a flag was thrown as well so they're going to sort all of that out I, I, I get the whole concept, but if I'm if I'm going to go make a tackle, I can't wait till the guy's head turns around, right. or else I can't make the tackle. It's very tough, you know. And that's why they try to improve the tackling techniques to be more upper based. So you have a corner that's small. He knows he can't really wrap up that big man. So what is he going to do? He's going to work down the thighs, anything that bends that waist down to cause him to go down. So I, I can't really coach something else. But again, that's part of the play uh, that has changed uh, the game. You know, it's really more offensive protection, and defensive recognition. When we were doing the feature on Alex Dreyfus, I talked to Coach Bigos about this. It's, an, it's a new rule, and, and it, when, it, when it's a defenseless receiver, you have to wrap him, not hit him. Exactly. And, and yeah. Coach Bigos shared some game field film 
where Dreyfus got flagged on a play where he, where Rudy said, hey, he wrapped him up. What else is he supposed to do? Exactly. So, so there is still some, some question in the minds of the players and the coaches. How, what is the right technique to, to stop right. a player when you're on defense and not get flagged for it? As well as the perspective of that referee at that play. You know, they all have angles to cover, and that's right. It's going to be uh, a judgment. First and 20 for East Lime after all that. They got hit with a flag. McNamara rolling, Hinkley's chasing him, and Hinkley has him from the weak side and sacks him at the 30-yard line for a loss. This defense is playing real good so far in the second half. So that's going to bring up second and call it 22, perhaps. Tough, tough situation right here for East Lyme. McNamara, when given time, has been very effective. And East Lyme had been really moving the football. The second half here has been a little bit hit and miss to start with some penalties and some injuries. And now East Lyme faces a second and 23. McNamara has time, zips it for Dreyfus. It's incomplete, almost intercepted by Wyatt Woodcock but it hit the turf and that'll bring up third and long. I like it, somebody over there told Wyatt to basically jump off and get into your zone real quick. So before the snap, he got into the depth where he would need to be, almost had a pick in that situation. Talk about a momentum change with the Wildcats right now taking action. You know, these DBs right now are playing a lot better in the second half. It seems like they're communicating better. Um, they're getting into their routes and jumping on them, causing that timing with the quarterback to be uh, on the sour side. So third and 23, ball is at the 29-yard line of East Lyme. Petrini goes wide left. Leone wide right. McNamara, motion man, cuts across. And we're going to get a flag. I think that's going to go against the Vikings. Delay of game. What a tough situation for the Vikings right now. Five yard penalty will move inside the 25. I mean, you've, you know, we've talked about this. This is where this play for East Lime needs to not result in a turnover right. and or an injured player. Run your play, get five, ten yards, punt it away. Exactly. But, I mean, get third the 28. Right. And East Lime's going to get a five yard penalty against. NFA, so they're right. going to get it right back again. <laughs> a little tag you're it with the flags there. Now, if they only do that four more times, they'll have a first down. True. Anything's possible. <laughs> McNamara runs a backside screen. Patterson makes a great catch. And Patterson gets up to the 35-yard line. And that's exactly what we were talking about, though. Get the yardage almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Not quite. Uh, it's going to bring up fourth and long. And fourth and 17, we'll get Van Dusen back in for a punt. Bagos made a great call on that. Throw that screen. Get yourself some good yardage. Keep that ball right in the center. Give a chance for the defense to right now uh, represent for the Vikings. But in the tennis match, a back forth, back forth, yep. NFA is going to have a chance here to sort of, they've just broken serve. If yep. they can come down and score, they'll be at a two-score lead. Which the Wildcats, yep, second half has been having the field advantage as opposed to East Lyme when they were having in the first half. It's a big punt for Van Dusen. Nice snap. High kick, lets it bounce as Goggin, and it goes out of bounds. Good field position at the 30-yard line. For NFA, they're Ooh. up two. They've got the ball. 6-10 remaining in the third. You're watching Game Day Live. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza, 
in Waterford. Hinkley. Keeps it himself and nothing there. Gain of maybe a yard. We're going to bring Peter back in for the Fitch Killingly score. After uh, three quarters, ten. Fitch 37, Killingly 29. Ouch. So it is still a one score game. One score on the two point conversion, but Killingly staring at a third loss. And Fitch staring at cementing itself as the number one team in the ECC. Mm hmm. Coach Ellis is doing a great job over there for the Falcons. Hand off to King. Good gain on second down. King on the carry for a gain of eight. Gain about eight. It's going to bring up third, third and two, down, which two is a much more manageable third down. down. I'll tell you, this offense has a psychological effect to the defense where you're grinding and you continue to run these big positive yardages that sooner or later your attitude about defense is just trying to stay out there and do what you have to do, but you can't do it. That's something that's really psychologically devastating for, for the Vikings if, if these uh, Wildcats continue to run this way. Hinkley's going to keep it himself. Off right tackle. First down and more as Hinkley crosses the 45-yard line. And more importantly, NFA had blockers all the way down yards ahead of him. The attitude of the lineman right now is outstanding. This is where I love it. We used to call it the juice, you know. Coach Bunico used to get excited. When that offensive lineman was cranking, he would always ask for the juice. The attitude of the Wildcats right now is that offensive line is knowing that they're beating the defense. The defensive linemen have their hands on their hips. You know, this is tough right now. East Lime needs a big play. Hinkley. Now he wants to throw, pressured, and he's sacked and by Matt Leone. All that's the, the way play. back to the 32-yard line. Hinkley wanted to throw, and Leone blitzed it and got there first. By Matt Leone. I'm kind of shocked that, that the Wildcats were trying to run some deep routes. In a situation like that, when you have play action, a quick throw to the flats, a quick hitch route, something really quick like that can, can keep the tempo going. But now they got... <laughs> They're in a bad situation right here. Second and long, long. Second and 19. Hank Lee will keep it himself. Off right tackle. Not much there. Ball's loose. Ball's loose. And recovered by the Vikings. Matt Leone. Hinkley put it on the turf. Leone recovered, and there's the break the Vikings needed. Wow, what a momentum changer right there. And guess what's coming down? The rain. <laughs> I'm it's sorry, not, what, was the, what was the deal that was made? Peter only Robbie? if it was raining heavy. If it was Which raining heavy, P Peter, Peter not yet. <laughs> Dave Pasta's going to have to go three bleachers down in front of us. I'm, I'm down with that, though. I have my windbreaker. This looks like big number two for me. Slime is getting better. He's jumping up and down, ready to jump in there. Well, I'd make a Matlock reference, but I'm pretty sure no one in our viewing audience would know the Matlock. There's, there's some old screws out there. There's some old dads right here yelling and screaming. Give it to them. If I said that Matlock was back on the case, Peter, would you know, La yes. would you know I that you. I got you. Of course. Okay. Matlock is back on the case. McNamara wants to throw on first down. Hinkley blitzed him. He got it out to Patterson on a screen. Patterson down the sideline has a blocker. Aiden Patterson, touchdown Vikings. They beat NFA at its own game. That's right. We talked about it earlier. If that blitz comes, that back's going to scat to the side. Quick pop, and he was downtown with that speed. Great play, Slime. Hinkley was half a step wow. from Barry and McNamara. McNamara got it out to Aiden Patterson. He Tecmo bowled it down the sidelines. Woo. Touchdown, Vikings. 33-29. And Bruno in for the extra point. Bruno in for the extra point try. Man, these are Tecmo Bowl plays tonight. You calling it, brother. Snap, hold, kick. It's up and it's good with 326 here in the period number three. East Lime 34, NFA 29. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. The Day strives to cover stories our readers care about. With a feature called Curious CT, we make it easier for you 
to tell us what you want to know about the people, places, and issues in Southeastern Connecticut. You submit a question, readers vote, and we investigate and report. Go to theday.com slash CuriousCT for more details. You ask, you vote, we investigate. My thoughts right now are with Gage Hinckley of NFA. He was out there on kick coverage, or return, squatting, hand on the sides of his head because he has been everything for exactly. NFA tonight. Oh yeah. But in the course of two plays, he put the ball on the turf right. for a turnover and was half a step. Half a step on a, on a nice a sack there. On a blitz that yeah. ends up in a touchdown play. And right now he's thinking to himself, oh, I gotta get the ball yeah. back. He definitely chance. is gonna get the ball back and I know he'll hold it down on the offense. Bruno squibs it off of York and York wisely and athletically and confidently dumped on the ball and then limps off the field. So NFA will have it at midfield at the 49 yard line. Well, this game right now, and I'm telling you, with the fan base and everything, has been intense physical football. The tackling, the wrapping, the blocking, everything is top notch, top 10 power. And so these, some of these guys are getting these hits. Yeah, they're gonna have some bumps and bruises tomorrow. Gonna have to soak in some Epsom salt. <laughs> so the last possession for NFA, they put it on the turf and East Lime capitalized with a touchdown. Let's see what NFA does here off that turnover. A little counter. Ryan Cleary got a couple. Some shoving, which I've tried to explain to uh, some of the people in my family when they watch this. I said, if no one throws a punch and no one yanks a face mask, ah, don't worry about it. No, Shoving's deep, okay. Deep inside that pit right there, there are a lot of young teenagers that are really feeling that manhood in them and playing this game with a little bit more passion. Those linemen right now are probably talking in between plays, and so the referees are there to take care of business. You know, they want to keep it clean. But again, this is football that we've expected in the ECC. Great rivalry game, I like it. When linemen are pushing and shoving, it's called man dancing. It's man dancing, that's, just that's man right. Dancing. The man cha-cha. That's all that is. Timeout Wildcats. Timeout NFA. Woo! 2.38 remaining here in the third period. We're gonna take a timeout as well. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. 238 remaining here in the third quarter. 34 29 East Lime in what has been an incredible offensive explosion over the last mm -hmm. two and a half quarters. It occurred to me, Casey, kids these days watch a lot of The Simpsons, and so they're going to get the Matlock reference. Because of The Simpsons, because that's of right. The Simpsons, you're right. Aid. Outstanding. That's, that's a good point. New formation for the Wildcats. Toss to Sebastian, and nothing there. He's buried at the 50-yard line. I don't think we're going to have any safeties anymore when it comes to first down running plays because apparently everybody's in the box. They had almost nine guys in the box with a corner there just floating on the outside. So uh, they're definitely just go catering to the man and macho, macho style of football here. Oh, yeah. There's the big man running out. There's the safety coming in. Great call by the defensive coordinator for the Vikings. Pennington with the tackle that time for East Lyman. That was another different formation yep. and a, another different direct snap. Now they go back to Aaron Driscoll, the sophomore quarterback, in at quarterback. Driscoll, he's going to throw. Zips it over the middle, incomplete with a flag. Wow. Pass intended for King is incomplete with a penalty flag. On pass the was intended over the middle for Cleary, incomplete, and they're going to get a pass interference call 
against the Vikings. So clear it was running like a seam and he broke it into the middle. What happened was the defender had a good placement there, but he held his jersey and that was visible by the referee enough to call that penalty there. Talk about football being a game of inches in this situation, huh? Automatic first down as the Wildcats keep on pushing. It is a 15 yard penalty and it was first, excuse me, second and 10. So now we go back to another new formation. This time, direct snap goes to Cleary. Cleary breaks it outside, shows a move. Woo! Shutterbug, Jitter Juke into the end zone. Woo! Touchdown, Ryan Cleary. Circle, circle, triangle on that play, Case. <laughs> wow. Talk about patient running there. He pressed it to the corner, made a quick move, and left him in the dust. That is, if I count it right, the fifth different person yep. that they have directly snapped the football to. So they run that. It's called power. In, a, in, a, in the Super blocking formation, it's really simple. You're pulling the guard to the power side. Everybody's blocking down. And let those backs lead and funnel. But what happened was Eastline again overloaded. The cutback was not there, and he was off to the races. you got to be disciplined on the backside. Good. Extra point from Supernaut is good. And with 132 remaining, Woo! it is NFA 36, 36, East Lime 34. 70 yeah. points on the board. We're going for the Mamba. We're uh, going for the 81. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit ScientFCU.org to learn more. Once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, Dun, 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 dun. A color commentator named Pasta Sanabria dubbed this game a defensive battle. I thought it was going to be like seven to three. <laughs> Seventy points later, and a quarter plus to play. East Lime just gets the ball back at its own 25-yard line. They trail by two, 36-34. Boy, the defense in the, after the first, second quarter on in has been playing paper mache football defense. Just something that you wouldn't ever expect from these two teams, but got to give credit for the offense now, knowing where to attack the defenses. And this is something that whoever has that ball last might be the one to make the win. So we'll see what East Lime does in this series. McNamara has had a great night through the air. Little jet sweep to Page. Page. Big play, and all the way up to the 40-yard line. He'll be right at the sticks. That should be enough for a first down. Page on the carry. Ten-yard gain on the play. That is enough for a first down. They'll move the chains. We have an injured Wildcat. They're going to attend to him, and while they do, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on game day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game day, launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. After the game, follow Game Day CT on social media to see our pick for the Scient Federal Credit Union top play. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit Scient. FCU.org to learn more.
Greatness has no off season. Not if you want to get faster. Not if you want to get stronger. Not if you want to get better. This is where it all begins. This is our playground. This is where we get ready. Where we get faster. Where we get... Nehemiah York was escorted off the field, but he was under his own power. First down, deep ball. Open is Leone, what a catch! Matt Leone on the fingertips! Wow, what a play! Great Wait. coverage, great coverage. Unbelievable. He stretched it, he continued to run. That's one thing I always tell receivers. You see that ball up in the air, don't you know, stop running. He kept with form and he fingertip caught that. Excellent. Wyatt Woodcock was step for step with him. Ronan McNamara threw it where only Leon could run it down and he did. And great a call. huge play. A great call. He knew their best cornerback was out. He went and challenged him immediately, and that's what you get right there, a Chris big play. Roughing the passer, roughing the passer the as well against McNamara uh, uh, when McNamara was throwing, so that's going to go even farther. It's going to end up being a close tremendous. to first and goal. Tonight has been, Peter, you could put together a great eight off of off just, just this game. tonight's game, but that yeah. might be in contention for the catch of the year when we look at just where in his fingertips he caught that football. Awesome play. We have a one-handed catch by McGugan. We've got a one-handed catch with Killingly. That we got guys going up in traffic, but that was one heck of a catch. Never breaking stride and bringing it off the fingertips. First and goal from the nine, McNamara. McNamara wants to throw, now he rolls right. Rolls right, gonna keep it himself. Spins, dives, and he's close. Two-yard line, Ronan McNamara showed his wheels McNamara and his toughness, spun it, tried to reach for the end line. He's two yards short, second and goal. What a third quarter. It's like Rocky Balboa, Clubber Lang, one right after the other, banging and punching. One more round. We got one more round, Apollo. We're in the fourth. One more round. <laughs> that is going to take us to the end of three. You got to come back because this fourth quarter is bound to be dynamite. Wow. 36-34, knocking on the door are the Vikings. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on Game Day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and Game Day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do, and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's gonna say what that'll make it onto the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Well, game day is brought to you by Water for Dental Health. 3634 brings out a lot of smiles, and well, yep. you know what? Water for Dental Health has solutions for all your dental needs because smiles, great smiles, begin at Water for Dental Health. Go to waterfordentalhealth.com for more information and find out how Water for Dental Health can make you smile like you're about to go into the end zone. Woo, man, pumping 70 points. Second and goal on the one. East line, power formation of their own. Got the lineman in the backfield. McNamara tosses to Patterson, and Patterson waltzes into the end zone. AP into the end zone for the Vikings, and wow. the seesaw continues. <laughs> the level of gameplay for these two teams have been unbelievable. Both offenses are just right now running it. 40 to 36 at some point. We're going to wonder if East Lime is going to end up having to go for two here. But right now, I like 
that Rudy Bagos has just yeah. kept kicking the extra points. Well, mathematically, if we had the old chart they used to uh, do, that we could get a, a three-point opportunity at the end. So he's probably thinking that way. Kick is up, and it is good. 11.55, we just got underway, and we got a whole fourth quarter left. Don't go away, 41-36. Vikings on top. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. Fall is here, which means it's time for Game Day's Great Eight. The best eight plays of the week submitted by you, the viewers, on any of our social media platforms. You send us the best videos from practice or the game, any sport in the fall, and we might see about putting it on the Great Eight of the week. Forty-one thirty-six. NFA about to get the football. I'd go for two every single time, Pasta. Yep. What about you? Well, I agree with what you're saying there. If you have a team that practices and does it all the time, yeah, why don't it be a two-point team? If you don't have a kicker that can do that, but if you really have a solid kicker, you want to keep that consistency to help out. But the ratios do favor for people that do two points just because you have a chance to double up no matter what and still come back if you have to do it again to even it up. So two tries for an opportunity to be a plus two. It's a good thing. If I score four touchdowns in a game, I'm betting that I can get two two-point conversions. If I get the third one, I'm on the plus side. Right. Now, in this game, it would be four touchdowns in a quarter. Mm. And that's what we're facing right now. What does the fourth quarter hold? Kick takes a great bounce. And NFA is just going to fall down on it just inside their 20-yard line. So East Lime has hit that sort of squibby Bouncing kick all yeah. game, and that one worked out well, and it's going to put NFA at their own 20-yard line. Man, both sides lines have been up since the game has started. And the fan base here, boy, they're top-notch. You know, next week, we've got two of the premier offenses in the ECC as well, Griswold and Waterford. Mm -hmm. Those two teams average 30 points apiece. Maybe we're going to get into a little offensive flow here. Up the middle. Not much there on first down. East Lime has done a good job on first down against uh, the power. Three yards there, but it's been second down where they've, whatever reason, NFA has popped them. It's an automatic call, and I know what he's doing. He's doing a great job bringing that pressure to that strong side. Now playing his second down, NFA still tries to make an attempt to pass, and that's what really can hurt them. Again, we haven't seen a lot of safeties deep 10 yards as of late. They're all down inside the box. The safety here right now is only six yards deep. Hinkley, going to keep it himself. Now cuts it back up the middle. Good gain. It'll be third and short once they finally get him down. And he crosses the 25 to the 26-yard line. So it'll be third and three. A power run from senior Gage Hinkley. Big play here for the Wildcats. Keep this ball running. The only thing that can stop these offenses is the clock. Yeah. You know what's great about this season? It's when you know all your athletes are top notch. We're in the fourth quarter, no one's cramped up. They've just been banged up. Tough teams. Hinkley bounces it off of a tackle. Now he gets to the outside. First down. Dreyfus wrestles him down. Those are two premier athletes right there. Alex Dreyfus wrestling down Gage Hinkley, but not until NFA has a first down. First and 10 Wildcats from their own 38. To the 38 yard line, first and 10 Wildcats. Clock will be at 10 minutes when Hinkley takes this snap. Little counter inside and nothing there. That's the play Cleary popped before. Yep. Great defensive mindset, stay home. That was the key right there. You had two defenders coming back and dealing with that business on that counter. Second and nine. I said East Lime's done a great job on first down. It has been, never, it's been after that. Yep. Dreyfus. Yep. Tell you, the Hogs are going at it tonight. Both sides of the ball. They're really trying to determine who's going to win this battle. Still in the fourth quarter, pushing back and forth. This is intense. Second and nine. Direct snap. This time it goes outside. 
Sebastian. Oh, big hit. And a flag's going to come down as Sebastian was popped at the 35-yard line. But that's going to be first down Wildcats and tack on 15 more. The superpower play on that right side was really clogged up, but the lineman kept on pushing, and he pierced through with his size right there. That's great. Just a half foot on each side. He penetrated through and made a great run. I'm really excited that he popped right back up because that hit was a hard one. Boy, these boys are going to ice up. We're going to have a, a shortage of ice after the end of this game, brother. This is when the ice tub, you need the tub. Oh, boy. We got a timeout on the field with 9.13 remaining. It's a barn burner. We'll be Woo! back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on game day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game Day launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Nothing better than a mom mom popping up out of the stands that? ready to, she, she was, was ready to go. She was just as fast as her son. Dude, that was great. Like, don't hit my boy. As soon as he was safe, she went right back to the spot and just grabbed it. Start cheering. Hankley's going to go left. Met there by the interior boat of the Vikings. It's amazing. You know, we've seen everything today as far as what football brings. But I think mom running down there, booking it to the, to the gates just to make sure her son was okay. And then after that, thumbs up, runs right back, was probably one of the plays of the game. Boy, these fans tonight are really rocking it. The student body is packed there, really cheering on. And what a great night of football. This is where NFA has been most dangerous, these second and nines. King. East Lime does a nice job stretching it that time. Jack Hayes, the junior lineman, 71, held his block, held his blocker off and was able to flow to the play. And that's going to bring up third and ten. Great job by the, defense, uh, the defensive line from East Lyme. Again, when we tell them to engage, you want to press off your block so you have space to get off a block. And that's what they did there. They lifted those offensive linemen, neutralized their power, got off a block, and wrapped up. I love the substitutions that's going on tonight. Coaches are really doing a great job getting players in and rotating. Driscoll now at quarterback on third and 10. Driscoll pressured, rolls right. Looks like he's going to keep it. Doesn't have enough. Wrestled out of bounds, and we're going to get another flag on East Lime as Driscoll was wrestled to the ground. He lost his helmet. <laughs> East Lime is shooting itself in the foot here defensively with penalties. That was a personal foul, horse collar tackle against the Vikings. And now this is why the horse collar tackle there is a really bad play by the third and 10. It's not Hinkley, it's Driscoll. He's not a runner. He wasn't going to get the first down. There were two guys there. You got to go mid, you got to go to the waist there. You don't have to yeah. tackle high. Okay, but that's going to get them all the way down into, under, I think, a first and goal. Yeah, they're in the red zone. Man, what a game case. Never would have expected this morning with the ring coming down that we were going to have a high scoring game like this. And a timeout, or official whistle. Moving this, oh, there's, had the ball at the wrong spot. They moved it back to where it needs to be. <laughs> Even the referees right now putting it in. <laughs> Here we go. Sebastian moves, and that's what we're going to get a call. It's going to be an illegal play. procedure or an illegal shift. Illegal procedure against the Wildcats. The that's a little false start, and they got off. First and now it's going to be first and 15. And Wildcats didn't need that right there, but they're still effective to call any play that they want in this situation. First and 15. Hinkley. 
has had a huge day for NFA. Going to keep it himself, and he was met before he could do anything at all by Jacob Garo. Down at the 19 yard line. Loss of four. Good Loss discipline by Jacob. He was the guy that's going to be the peel guy. If the quarterback gives, it's the other backer. He stayed home. He saw that second quarterback down. couldn't want to do anything with that. So second and 18. This is where NFA needs to find a play. Hinkley, bubble screen, complete to Gaugan. East Lime there, and not much on what the bubble pursuit. screen. Great pursuit. The safety realized it. He came down. They rotated coverage, which is pretty good there, and they all wrapped up. Great defensive play by the Vikings there. Third and 15. I'll put it in your head now. We are well within Supernaut's range. Yes, sir. If it's fourth down, do you take the three and get it to within a field goal, or do you go for it down five? That's Let's a great, see. great question there, brother. Let's Third down. Happens. Hinkley's going to throw it. Has time. Corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Two Vikings collided with each other. But the pass went incomplete. And what's interesting is he was looking for Gaugan at the pylon. Yep. It wasn't pass interference because they were on the ground, exactly. but Gaugan couldn't get around him. No, no. And that's the thing about, about the receiver routes. When they run a wheel, you want those D-backs to collide. In that situation, the ball was a little bit overthrown. So fourth and 15, the ball is on the 16-yard line. Looks like they're going for it. With 5.55 remaining. Big opportunity here for the Wildcats. You would love to come up with something, and we have a kicker like Cam. Three points is really valuable. We'll see what happens here. There's a one-to-one -one matchup on the opposite side. Hinkley drops back, throws it, and it's almost intercepted. Incomplete, almost picked off, and instead it is a Turnover on downs, the Viking defense holds and they'll get it back 41-36 with 5.49 remaining. Was that Jacob there? Jacob was the one that made that uh, under, under call. He actually dropped under and got that receiver to run over top and that's where he could deflect the ball and make a play. Great series here for the Vikings. That second down crucial play was what helped them out and that penalty. Let's see what East Lime could do right now with their offense being on fire as well. McNamara. Hands off to Patterson. Patterson makes one man miss, cuts it back inside. Barry Sanders Patterson with a first down. Wow. For East Line. He runs with a lot of passion. You know, just low to the ground, uses those big linemen to get through the hole. First down, Vikings. The momentum right now is favoring the Vikings. There is a great band of the 80s you know them wham wham that's right they had a great song you know it wake me up wake before me you up go go before you go with the first two lo first two words of that song look jitterbug jitterbug that's right his little skit scat style definitely bringing it for the vikings first and 10 east line mcnamara east line happy to take a little bit off the clock gives it again to patterson and patterson Takes it off right tackle, cuts it up right into the middle. And that's a gain of four. And I think, as crazy as it sounds, East Lime now would love to eat clock. Oh, that's what I was going to talk about right now, you know. Coach Burgos, one thing, he's when he has the lead, he has plays that he can utilize that grinds. And with a running back like that, to gain three yards a pop is definitely going to help him in the favor. Clock is running pretty quick right now with 4.30 in the left here. Yeah, what a game, Case. What a game, brother. Second and five, ball on the 36-yard line. Ronan McNamara in the shotgun. Again, gives it to Patterson. Patterson has a little seam, just enough. First down as he crosses the 45-yard line. He's saying, feed me. That's right. And those linemen right now are loving each other. They're giving themselves a high five. They're in the zone. Chains will move, clock will run. Talk about a unified front for that offensive line for the Vikings. 
They want it on their backs. They want it back running and running down the hole. Standing at his own 40-yard line, Ronan McNamara letting clock burn. Sees the official's hand go up, so he knows it's time. Keeps it himself off the RPO, and he's got a first down. Biggest run of the game for Ronan McNamara. Little read option with Patterson, Amen. he got it perfect. Patterson, everybody's got his eyes on him, and as soon as he gets that fake, he's got a lane right there for that number four running. And you can sense the NFA defense starting to get a little they're numb right now. Antsy. They're you know, they waiting can... for something to happen, and, and right now it's not happening. You know, one of the biggest things that you would love to have is to force them in a long down situation so you can utilize what the Wildcats are good at, their speed off the edges. But, boy, this running down the football game is awesome tonight. They've been milking every second of the play clock. First down handoff. Patterson again. Gain of three. One thing already... Patterson on and we're going to see NFA, I think, use a timeout. And we're going to keep it here. But one thing already is NFA has put themselves in a precarious position because knowing the punter of East Slime, if, if NFA holds, you're going to see uh, Van Dusen punting from about the 45-yard line, which right. means... NFA is going to be in in a serious situation, especially if he sets up what is called a coffin kick style, where you actually put your body into the corner and punt it and get as close as you can inside that five. I mean, I, you got to think that NFA does not does no better than their own twenty. Right. With an, with an offense built around running the football. Yep. You know, two, three minutes left right now. When do they get it back? You know, if they get it back, this is where all the this is where as coaches, I think the most underrated aspect of coaching is clock management right. in the last few minutes of halves and, and, and of games. You can't feel afraid to do things. You have to still be aggressive, but understand the concept of what you want to do. Keep that ball on the ground, keep that clock rolling, keep the chains moving, get the attitude of that defense to drop. And all of them right now are favoring the Vikings. Rudy Bagos needs to know right now already, if I face a fourth down, am I going to punt? Am I going to go for it? Where and when and when? Yep. Second down. McNamara going to keep it himself, has a big hole, and he's going to be up close to the sticks. Third down, but a big gain by McNamara brings up a huge third down. Now here at the 31, I think, so now Rudy needs to know, right? I said, if we get a fourth down, yep. am I going to go for it on a punt? I think here at the 30, you can you're still looking go at him going for it. Yeah, third down and short, fourth down and short, still favors the Vikings ball, definitely. Timeout, NFA. Talk about a chess game, brother. 2.36 <laughs> remaining. They trail by five. They need the ball back. We'll be back. You're watching Game Day live on the day.com. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Waterford. Third and one. Oh my God. Ball on the NFA 33 yard line. NFA has used two timeouts. If East Lime gets this first down, they will be able to effectively end this ball game. McNamara, the great senior, under center, keeps it himself, dives forward. East Lime thinks he has enough. The officials say. Yes, First does. down! Wow, big play right there. Now, you can go back to your play game and pick out the plays you want to do. Mix it up with your quarterback First and your running back. I think right now, what Wildcats have to do is when they're tackling, they have to work on punching that ball out or stripping that ball out to create just something. They need a miracle of energy that, that can help them out right now. NFA can really not stop the clock. East Lime is very close to victory formation. Two minutes. Two big plays right now for the Vikings. That's all they need, two big plays. McNamara. High snap, hands off to Patterson. Hold on to the football as he gets to the 30-yard line. That was a great defensive call from the Wildcats. That strong side blitz right there got nothing. 
Second and ten. As a defensive person, you want to make sure you keep them in long. Second and long, third and long. Make them force a throw. If you think about it, all they need probably right now, they've been averaging, what, one minute a drive? So <laughs> this is the only one they've been clocking time. I don't see how NFA can stop the clock and get the ball back with any measurable time. Right now, you just got to make a good snap and hold on to the football if you're East Lime and you get home with a victory. They're bringing the house. Keeps it himself on the RPO. First down. Fighting more yards. McNamara. Ball oh! strip. Ball strip. Ball strip. NFA picks it up. NFA picks it up. There's the miracle. There is the miracle that the defense needed right there. Makai Howard with the fumble recovery as McNamara was trying to go to the ground. He was. But they stripped the football, and the Wildcats have life. The best fundamental technique, we always say the first person wraps and keeps him up, the second one's punching. He was trying to go down, but that first guy kept him up there. Got it ripped off, man. East Lime was a going to the ground away from this game being over. Taken away from them. Instead, 52 seconds remaining. On their own 23-yard line, a touchdown wins the game. Anything else, and the Vikings will hold on. East Lime will take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout, and when we come back, it's on. I'm telling you, my sugar level must be down. You're watching Game Day live <laughs> on Day.com. Well, as we head into a brand new season on game day, we want something brand new to come to all of you as well. Game day, launching its merchandise store for the first time. Now, as you know, greatness has no off season and game day has no off season either. We're always working to provide you the best we can do and that includes great merch. So come on into the merchandise store for game day. As the season progresses, who knows who's going to say what that'll make it on to the next game day t-shirt. Find out in the merch store. Critical situation you're calling it, Casey. You know, could have taken a knee and probably give them no time with it, but they did. If he, Here took, we go, if he takes the knee there, I think it, they're getting the ball back with 15 seconds yeah, left instead of 51. But Aaron Driscoll's in the game. The sophomore quarterback, Hinkley, wide right, the playmaker. What do the Wildcats have? Out it goes quickly, and what a hit. That was bombastic. As he threw it to the flat, that linebacker came up like a missile, wrapped him up like a rugby player, put him down. Now it shocked the Wildcats. Niall Green with the big hit. We're down to 30 seconds. Driscoll rolls. Heaves deep down the sideline, and it's incomplete. It's going to bring up third and three with 23 seconds. Casey, I just saw something that was a little bit of a leak now. If East Lime, that backside corner, has to stay disciplined because that wide receiver was wide open here by the numbers. If the top guy saw that, he'd probably go back to it. 23 seconds, Casey. Boy, this is better than a Tecmo game. Third down. Seems like they only have one or two rushers on there. Everybody else is playing cover everything. <laughs> I like that they're jamming the receivers. That's good right there. Stay under it. Driscoll over the middle to Hinkley. Caught. Breaks a tackle. Hinkley out of bounds at the 45-yard line with 15 seconds. Playmakers make plays. And number six gives NFA life. Hinkley, wow, what a play. That young man right there on that dig route. Catching it and keep unbelievable. 15 seconds at the East Lime 45. And Aaron Driscoll threw a dime. Hinkley broke a tackle and wisely got out of bounds. Boy, everybody's standing on their feet right now. Driscoll rolls right, being pressured, throws, complete. First down, East Lime, but there's a flag with five seconds remaining. Oh, I think we're going to get hurt. 
I think we're going to get a hold against NFA. That would hurt so much. Yes, and he did. It was so sad. That defensive player was trying to get out there, and one of the linemen just grabbed his jersey and held him. So visible for the referee to see that. And that's a tough play for the Wildcats right now. Goggin Five seconds, had the, brother. Goggin had the first down. Oh, man. We got one play left, brother, from what I'm seeing. Five Holy seconds on the clock. That's going to be who can throw it 55 yards. Here we go. A, a years ago, NFA ran the hook and lateral. To, oh, boy. To beat Killingly in what was the senior night miracle here at NFA. This is a little bit farther than that. This is all we got. Driscoll rolls. Pressure. Gets a block. Steps up, and now he's going to run it. And that's going to be the end. What a game! For the Vikings. Wow! Ragnarok. What a great victory for the Vikings. Such a tough loss for the Wildcats, but a great game for everybody here, brother. Wow. 41-36. Now, of course, after we sign off, all of you need to get on to Game Day CT on all our social media sites. And you can find out what the science play of the game was because I don't have any idea. There's about a dozen to choose from. Oh, man. And then you're going to want to find our interviews with Coach Rudy Bagos and our player of the game, 41-36. Beautiful. East Lime holds on for the coach. Love you, Pasta brother. Bria, Peter Wappi and the crew. What a game. What a night. Man, You can watch it game day live on the day.com.